Damn, that smells good. Oh, oh hey, hey everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Uh, this is awkward. I wasn't smelling the book, I swear. But it has a, 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 ten, a 10 for freshness. 10 for freshness. Hello everybody, welcome to Rob's Gaming Table, I'm Rob, and today we're going to be streaming a uh, first look, we'll, we'll flip through some pages. Uh, you know, the, there's only like 10 pages in the book, it's super small, so it'll be quick. Uh, but we'll go through the pages in the book, uh, kind of talk about how this is different, uh, what game this is for, what we're talking about today, we'll get into that. Uh, and we'll be playing the prequel of this campaign for the Hexplorit Valley of the Dead King board game. But hello everybody joining live, I'm very excited for you to be here. I don't know if I'm allowed to use those kind of puns. Um, but yeah, hello everybody. Hello, hello, hello. I see we have some official, official designer people in the chat. James, Frank, Jonathan, hello, hello. Hello everybody else, of course. Uh, so if we have any complaints today about this book or the playthrough or anything goes wrong, uh, we can fully blame it on the designers in the chat. So uh, it should be good. <laughs> any bad rolls of dice, uh, typos, um, me forgetting a rule, we can blame it completely on them, has nothing to do with me. All right, that's how we roll here. <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining, hello. If you're new here, uh, there is subscriber mo mode only on in the chat, um, because usually YouTube lately there's like bots that will get in the chat and kind of spam stupid links and stuff, so I put on subscriber only chat, so if you're trying to chat and you're wondering why it's not working, uh, you have to be a subscriber to the channel, and then it takes like a minute uh, and then you'll be able to uh, uh, chat. <laughs> Target acquired. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Oh, you think I just weirded people out by catching me smelling the book? <laughs> yes, James says he's not wrong. The new book smell is great. Yes. Uh, anyone who's new to the channel doesn't know. I like smelling freshly opened cards and, and books and, and board games in general. Brings me back to the days of, of being a wee, a wee little guy opening uh, brand new Nintendo Entertainment System cartridges and smelling those booklets. Games used to come on cartridges and had little paper books in the box. Uh, and I love that smell. That smell just brings me back nostalgically to that. Not every board game smells as good though. Some, some stay. Uh, yeah, th this one smells good. <laughs> hello, hello, hello Sam. Hey Brian, Dragon. And everyone else of course. Uh, let me see, is there anything in the chat? Uh, so we'll go over what uh, we're playing today. I'll go over, again, the game that this campaign book... Uh, we're mainly talking about this today. It's called Clicks Madness. It's a campaign book uh, to turn the... Kind of like... Uh, how it was described before? I think Doc's here. I think it was Doc, uh, one of our producers that described Hexplore it to me originally said that it's kind of like an adventure game kit in a box uh, with a bunch of like modules. You can mix it up, change the difficulty, tons of options. Uh, it's just tons of pieces and things. And you can kind of form the game to play it how you want, which sometimes comes at the cost of like balance and stuff. But you know, I mean, you can figure that stuff out and kind of tweak the game. Um, but this campaign system, there was no campaign system before. So you'd kind of like set up, play a game, um, sometimes they'd be short, sometimes it t it'd take a long time, you could uh, use different like variant rules to speed it up, slow it down, that kind of thing. Um, but there was no, no campaign, nothing to connect sessions. Um, so that's what they designed here was a giant campaign book. So you can play multiple chapters, multiple sessions. Uh, and we'll go through the book and kind of talk about how that changes the game. If you've never seen Hexplorit before, uh, there are uh, links down in the video description. Uh, to previous play uh, playthroughs that we've done on the channel of the different volumes. I'll go over the different volumes here before we get started, just so people understand what we're talking about. Uh, if you've never seen us play this game before or have never heard of it. Um, but yeah, this is going all the way back to volume one. They just, uh, I think this year, delivering the volume four. Uh, yeah, four, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so th there's, a, there's a series of games in this Hexplorit line, which we'll show you. Um, so this is cool that they've gone back and added some more value, given a reason to pull the first volume back off your shelf, or if you've never played it before, to grab it. Um, and it, I think it just adds, adds great value from what I've seen so far. So uh, we'll just play the prequel today. There will be a little bit of spoilers, but we're not going to go into the chapters. So, um, but heavy spoiler warning, on full disclosure, this book uh, is not out yet. It was sent to me early by the publisher. Uh, thank you for sending that over. I did add it on to um, a, uh, 
added on to a pledge that I'm supposed to get later this year. So when, when it, the volume four delivers, that's when you're supposed to get this book, uh, which I was planning on getting it then and looking at it, then playing through it then on the channel, which we will do. Um, but today we're just going to play, play the play, the prelude, play, play the prelude. And then later we're going to play the full campaign on the channel, but we'll do that after it's delivered to backers and everyone's got a chance to kind of play it if they want. And then they can come and join us and help us make decisions and try some different things out in our, on, on the live stream. So that's the plan. Ah. Heather's here. Hey, Heather. Uh, can't stay long. Getting on a plane home in a little bit. I just want to know if you plan on playing this in the channel. I'm not sure what you mean, Heather, but yes, we are going to play today. We're going to play Hexplore it with the campaign. We're going to go through some decisions. You guys will play along. I'll put up polls in the chat. You guys can vote and pick which path we take and that kind of stuff. We'll just go the, through the prelude or prequel or whatever it's called, the prequel, um, which gives some decision. It, it's meant to kind of teach you the campaign system and understand what has changed from the regular game to this one. And then by the end of this stream, you guys have a full understanding of what this book is, how it works, how it's different, and you could decide whether it's for you or it's not. Um, and we'll go over like what's involved there and the cost and how to get it and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, just, just killing some time for others to show up, but hello everyone. If you're new to the channel, hit that like button, helps other people find these videos on YouTube. Much appreciated. Uh, Matt says, Rob, are you going to explain what you were doing as you go? Uh, exactly what I'm going to do, Matt, for sure. Uh, so I will explain the game as we, uh, go through this excellent book here. And, uh, we'll go through page by page and kind of show you what's different, uh, from a high level. And then we'll actually get into some gameplay uh, and we'll go through and I'll explain it the whole way through for sure. <laughs> no need to excuse yourself, Heather. <laughs> oh man, this is going to be punny today. Okay. Okay. So if you guys have questions, uh, I see there is, um, Frank C, I'm not going to try to pronounce the last name. Uh, Frank C, Jonathan uh, is under the Hexplore It account. And then James Spade uh, are the three designers that worked on this book. They are in the chat. Uh, I'm sure they worked on other Hexplore It stuff, but they are in the chat. If you guys have any questions, throw them out as we go. Um, yeah, and, and you guys can chat amongst yourselves. And if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them if I catch them. Um, and, and that kind of thing. But at the end, we'll kind of go over thoughts and discuss it and that kind of stuff. So yeah, let's, uh, let's do some story time and, and discuss what Hexplore it is and what this thing is and, and why we're, why we're playing with a, a, a university, um, or a college, uh, textbook today. Uh, we'll go over that. All right. So long time ago in 2017 uh there was a game that came out on kickstarter or was released from kickstarter a kickstarter project uh called hexplore it the valley of the dead king you see it on the screen here this is the board game geek entry uh if you're looking for any information on this game or any of this stuff i have linked it down below in the video description so you can check it out uh and i'll go over some more stuff and show you guys that but all this stuff should be linked down below if you're looking for it okay uh, if you want to open some of these pages read a little more dig in um, but from a high level overview, it's one to seven players, sp supposedly best with four. I've never played it higher than two. Uh, my wife and I, Mel, have played it on the channel multiplayer before. Uh, full co-op. Uh, I've played solo on the channel before. Today we're playing solo, obviously. Yep, yep, we're playing solo today. Uh, it's 60 to 180 minutes. Um, but the way we play on the channel, I will stretch that kind of play out to like seven hours because I play slow, explain everything, chat with the chat and take breaks. So today... It says the prequel is about an hour to an hour and a half to kind of play through it or an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, but we'll be here for like three hours or so answering questions, going through it step by step, diving deep. That's what we do here. So if you're wondering why the video is so long, if you're watching this later, uh, there's your answer. <laughs> uh, it is a 3.21 out of five weight. So it's definitely a medium to medium heavy kind of uh, adventure game. And like I said, it's kind of like an adventure kit in a box. Um, and you need this game, this board game that came out in 2017, it did not have a campaign. And what they've done recently is they started working on a project, uh, to create this book so you can play with the components from this game in a series of campaigns, connecting stories. There's four chat or, or sorry, one campaign, four chapters, 
a prequel, which is optional, but we are going to play it today to, to learn it and, and explain it. And then there's a whole bunch of like NPC side quest stuff, like a huge chapter on that. So there's like tons of gameplay content uh, in this book, which we'll, we'll get into more in detail in a sec. I'm like trying to jump ahead, like, but I, I don't want to, but I'm trying to. So um, if you're like, man, I explore it. I, I have like, I have one of those. Uh, there have been four volumes so far. A fifth one is coming. Uh, it's spoiled in the back of this book, which I, I don't, I don't think I'll look at it today, but maybe if you stay around to the end, we'll, we can take a peek. I don't know if I'm supposed to see that, that at the very back, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but there is four volumes. So like I said, the first volume, uh, actually we we'll probably go to the main page. You can see here. So there's four games. Uh, what happens is the first one delivered on Kickstarter, uh, people started playing it. And of course, uh, smart marketing, when everyone's playing it and talking about it and reviewing it and that kind of thing. Uh, you announce you have another Kickstarter where everyone can grab the first one. Uh, but this game is available at retail. I've seen it at retail, so you can you can pick it up at retail. But then they create a second one with a different theme, change the mechanics, uh, added a little extra layer of complexity. But it's definitely cool. Uh, I do, I, man, I like them all. Um, and then the third one, Sands of Shrax, that came out, you know, uh, a couple years later. It's a uh, desert theme, you know, got sandworms and all that kind of stuff. They're really Really cool mechanics added to that one, but it got a little more complex, a little more crazy. Uh, and then they kind of scaled it back a little bit, got back to the roots uh, with like kind of like a vampire Transylvania kind of theme in Domain of Mirrors and Octus, which we played the prototype of, um, I think it was last year, right? Well, it had to be last year, yeah. Last year, uh, which is delivering soon to backers, but this is the campaign for this game that is currently open and late pledging uh, on GameFound. Link down below if you're curious. We'll look at it in a sec. Um, but this is where you would get that campaign book at this point. Uh, you just kind of add it to a pledge in there. Um, and so anyways, so that's, that's that. But for each volume, okay, so you go to the first volume. It's not just a, a base game, a single box. Uh, they also have an expansion. Okay, so there's an expansion for every single one that kind of beefs up the complexity, gives you more toys to play with, more modules more modes, more variants, additional items in your store, additional cards to jam in the decks, you know, the things expansions do, right? Uh, then they brought out these uh, living cards, uh, which originally were online, they're scanned on a QR code. So the idea is you scan a QR code on a card that comes in the game, and based on the month you're in, it, that card will do a different thing, and you kind of just come here, and as the game releases, it does it for a full year, but then once that year passes, you can just go here and say like, Okay, we're playing today in March. So here's what those three cards, if you scanned what was that, you're gonna find this shadow uh, spirit enemy, and then uh, you know, you'll get these for your quest cards or whatever. Uh, but they also have these in physical packs. So if you have all this stuff, uh, and now there's a campaign link here, I've noticed this is new, uh, and this is for the Clicks Madness. So again, you can find the link to this website down below if you wanna read more about what this is we're, we're messing with today. Uh, I want to dig more deep into any of this stuff, but this campaign, uh, when you play this campaign book, it pulls from all this content. You only need the core box. You only need the core box to play the campaign. It gives you all the stuff you need to play with. But the, it does call for things in the expansion. It calls for things in the living cards, calls for things in this hero chest thing we'll talk about, uh, which was another um, side purchasable add-on thing. Uh, and there was cards included in that. And you, it pulls those in if you want. But you could totally ignore that stuff if you don't own it. So by minimum, to play with this campaign book that we are playing with today, minimum, you need the core box, the Valley of the Dead Kings, specifically. It doesn't work with any other core box, and my understanding is they're going to be doing campaigns for all these games, assuming these are successful. Uh, because if I go to volume two, there might be a link to that already. Nope, there's not. But uh, it's, it's, it's spoiled in the back of the book. Um, so anyways, uh, so yeah, they'll be doing a campaign for this, I assume, based on what's in the back of the book at some point. So yeah. Daniel says, Rob, don't forget to look at the download section for the cross-volume add-ons. Uh, I don't think we need to go that deep, Daniel, but yes, some of that stuff works, which we'll look at when we get into the book. We'll show exactly what, what works with it, but uh, again, it's a lot of content. Uh, but each game has its own like core box expansion, whatever. But again, we're, we're, we're basically focused on volume one today. 
So back to 2017 with a new campaign book. The campaign book is what we're here to talk about. If you're curious about Hexplorit default, uh, the value of the get Dead King, how it works, how the expansion stuff kind of works, uh, again, links down below uh, to the playlist, or you can go to this website, uh, read information on it. Um, there's probably other resources out there to explain that stuff. Uh, yeah. So I've linked this down below, but here is the campaign book we're talking about today. Uh, this is the uh, game found uh, for the fourth volume. And it is, if you're just looking for the book, if you already own Valley of the Dead King, or you pledged here, you pledged another one, I, I don't know. If you just want to get the add-on uh, book, you have to go down to the section for volume one. Not confusing at all. But uh, down in section one, oh yeah, there's this encounter deck stuff that also works with it, which I don't have yet because I think that was new for this pledge. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's a 39 here, 64 later, I think is that's what that means. Um, clicks madness. So there's a whole write up here explaining what it was in that thing. And I have a link to this exact page again, down in the video description. Okay. So if you're looking for any of this stuff, it's down there. Uh, but it explains it, but we'll go over all this today. Uh, but if you're looking for more info than what I give you today, you can find it all here. Okay. 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 All right, let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. I see it kind of flying by here. Uh, why isn't it a expansion? Asked Matt. Good question. Yeah, yeah, that's a question I want answered in the chat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Brian V says, already went in on, on last funding. Guess I should start budgeting for the next one as you know I'll be getting it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> yes, 2017, before the COVIDs. Yes, yes. <laughs> Things are different then. The before times, the before times. All right. I guess we can get into it. Let's start taking a look at this book. So having flashbacks back to those days of, uh, you know, uh, you know, being in uh, college, you know, buying those textbooks, which uh, those textbooks definitely, by the way, were not $40 uh, that were 500 pages plus. So this book, just to let you guys know, uh, I had to reinforce the legs of my table uh, to make sure it didn't uh, go lopsided because of the weight of this book. Uh, so add that into the cost too. If you have a folding flimsy table, uh, you might need to upgrade, okay? If you have any of those like table toppers on top of like, you know, those those crappy foldable tables, yeah, yeah, be careful. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. All right, uh, so yeah, 520 pages or something. Is that what it is? There's no page numbers at the back here, but I'm just gonna guess, like 510 or 520 plus, plus 500. I see 500 right here, but I don't wanna open it because I wanna spoil stuff. But yes, this book is beautiful. I love hardcover books like this. Uh, after college, in college, these books stress the hell out of me. So sometimes uh, you might see today on stream, I'll just have some PTSD start stressing out, like I have an exam coming or something and I have to like memorize half the book and I never studied until last minute and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, but today uh, we're gonna have some fun with this book. So this book is hardcover, beautiful book, has the uh, little, little ribbons in it to uh, mark the pages if you're gonna be flipping back and forth. Um, but there is an optional um, section in the back I should probably talk about. There are some player-assisted stuff that uh, is helpful. And I've printed some of that out. If I can find it. Yep, right here. So I've printed some of this stuff out. Um, but you can find all this stuff in the book at the front as you're playing through. Um, see here? Oh yeah, this stuff too, right? So there's these like sheets and handouts. So you can photocopy this stuff, but there is a PDF available on the website, link down below, um, where there's new enemies that are added in here that aren't in the original game and stuff that you play against. Uh, they even have a new player sheet uh, that you can print out, laminate, or just write with pencil or pen or whatever. I guess pencil would be better. Um, so there's all this handout stuff. There's new items for the campaign that are all here. We'll see some of that stuff. So I've printed out some of these handouts and laminated them. So I'm gonna try to use those today. Um, and you, or you might want a little clipboard action, a little clipboard action, you know, and, and, and write down stuff. So there's like campaign items and things. We'll go over that. 
Um, but there's a lot of stuff here. But you only need this book, and then you need, uh, again, the Valley of the Dead King. So you need this game to play this book, okay? Uh, and all the components from the game are fine. And then you might want to print out some of this stuff, but you don't need to. Uh, you can just mark things down right on a paper, right on, you know, your battle mat, uh, or your character mat, or whatever. Uh, I played it yesterday, played a little bit of the prequel yesterday with uh, a regular character mat. I didn't use, um, I did not use this, but today I'm going to try to dabble with this just to try it out. Um, but it's like a modified character hero sheet, so you got to like write stuff in as you go, but you can track your campaign items. And all these cool things that are new. There's the new turn order, uh, or like phases of the game and stuff. How it works. A little reminder there. Um, so again, I've played I've played Hexplore before a bunch of times. Uh, a while back, I played Valley of the King. It feels like forever ago. Um, so keep in mind, I might be a little rusty. I'll read the rules. I played it yesterday, but again, the campaign changes a bunch of things. So if you guys, uh, we'll go over what's different, but I may struggle a little bit. Have to look some things up because. Uh, I, my brain starts going to like the old way, the, the normal way of doing things, um, but it does change up quite a bit of stuff. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll try to figure that out as we go along, but you'll get an idea of what's different and how it works and if the book's for you or it's not. That's what we're here to do today, okay? We're not here today to be 100% rules correct with Explore It. Uh, I'm not sure if that's possible. <laughs> just kidding. All right. Uh, okay, so back to the start of the book. So I just want to point that out. I have some sheets printed out. That's where they're from uh, and I've laminated them. So these don't come with the book. You have to print these out. PDFs available online. Link down below. Okay. Okay. All right, let's get to the book. Okay, ready? Ready? So the art, as you can see, the art is amazing. Okay, the quality of the art, very bright, vibrant, beautiful. Okay, the printing is good. Very, you know, you can read it very easily. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, see more art amazing. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. All right uh, So there you'll see some familiar names in the chat there. So so we can confirm those aren't spam accounts. We've got James Spade and Frank Calcogno Calcogno, uh, I'm sorry if I pronounce it wrong uh, Lead writers and editors and then you got executive and managing writer editor uh, Jonathan of the Hexplorer team here um, So this Jonathan tells me this was like three years in, in the making uh, I also watched there's a two hour like live stream of James and Jonathan discussing this book as it was being created and wasn't finished yet. They were going through sections of it. I watched that whole thing to kind of understand it uh, before before I got the book. And man, these guys like like the passion, the love, like this 500 plus pages of like blood, sweat and 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 good feels uh, were put into this book. Uh, and it, it'll show. You'll see. It'll show. Renee, thank you for subscribing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so yeah, so, uh, oh yeah, right here, right here. So as you can see, <laughs> Cobold Gamer, <laughs> nice, nice, nice username. Uh, thank you for subscribing. So uh, the table of contents here, you can kind of get an idea of what's in the book. Uh, also, uh, my arms are kind of sore from, from picking this up and reading through it today, yesterday, the day before. Um, so I hope they don't drop it, uh, but it's heavy. I'm not joking. It's heavy. Uh, I haven't held books that, that have 500 plus pages and every page is like tons of art. They're super thick, so they're very heavy. Um, a lot heavier than like some, you know, textbooks and stuff. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's been a while. Uh, so you got, uh, the rules and what's different, how the campaign works, the items, uh, the hexagon. <laughs> Uh, opponents, create your heroes, all that stuff, all the instructional stuff gets you up to like page 34 or whatever, right? Then in 35, uh, we'll go through the prequel. And the prequel is just supposed to be like a kind of a demo, a short sample, you know, an hour, an hour and a half of gameplay to get you an idea how it works. You can play it over and over again so you really wrap your head around the campaign uh, so you don't get into the heavy stuff. Because these chapters, uh, they look beefy. It says they're like two to six hours each. Uh, they are a lot more pages, as you can see here from the page counts. Uh, there's way more decisions, way more options, way more surprises, way more just bigger maps, all this stuff. These are these are the serious business. Uh, and this is just like the little, you know, we're going to put our training wheels on today and play the prequel. So I'm not going to spoil chapter one, two, three, and four, the meat and potatoes of this book. I will not spoil that today. I'm not going to play any of that today. I'm not going to go to those pages. Um, so yeah, you're not going to get any of it here. 
subscribe later on in the year after people have got this book and you know had a chance to play through it a bit. Uh, Mel and I will play through it two player. Uh, we'll play the whole campaign live on the channel and people can watch that later as they, they feel, but spoilers of course. Uh, there's also a whole section here on NPC character side quests and stuff, um, which is like, you know, what's that, 60 something pages there. Uh, then we got those sheets and handouts. So yeah, it's like, I don't know, 510 pages or something. It's crazy. Crazy. Okay. So here, here is the products you can use with this. So it explains, like there's expansion content, living card content, the hero chest, campaign stuff. Uh, it, it gives you symbols in the book when it calls for those things, but you can totally ignore them if you don't own them. So again, you minimum need this, but you can add this in, this, this, and all these things to just have more options. They'll call on those things throughout the book. Even uses like little reminders here to tell you like, this might be a page you want to put a ribbon in uh, to go back to often. Uh, there's little arrows that'll tell you when to turn to the next page. They explain what the prequel's for that we're going to play today. It says, we built a standalone prequel adventure to help you get acquainted with how to play Clicks Madness. As a standalone chapter, it is not required to play as part of the main adventure. It contains only a fraction of the choices and narrative elements that appear in the chapters that follow. After you've read through the campaign rules presented in the prequel and have an idea of how to play, create a hero or two and play through it. Expect it to run roughly an hour and a half. We're only going to play true solo today just to demo it, but uh, you'll see here when it talks about number of heroes. When you're confident in the rules, and the flow of the game moved to chapter one. Okay. And it does here, say here, chapters one through four, expect each of those chapters to run between two to six hours. Okay. Number of heroes. While this campaign may be played with a single hero, the narrative elements assume a party of at least two heroes. Okay. Just so you know. Uh, but I did play through solo yesterday through some of the prequel. And it seemed fine. It made sense. Uh, I don't know if it was like a little hard because I was doing that or not, um, but I was doing okay. I was doing okay. Um, and then and it has campaign legend. So if we see orange, we got to go back to the NPC section in the book and we can have a side quest. If we uh, have to fight an opponent, it's in bolded red. Items are in blue and campaign statuses, which uh, let me blow your mind another time here. So here, here's the campaign statuses that are in the game. So you see the prequel has just a handful of the statuses. Uh, but if anyone's played like a kind of like a, these campaign books, these are how like kind of lock you out of sections or open up new sections to you in the book. Um, but there is like chapter one, two, three, and four, you can see there. And then even NPCs will give you statuses. Okay. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Crazy, crazy amount of stuff. So replayability is there. There's a thing for sure. Keywords and conditions. Okay, that stuff's normal. Campaign rules. Uh, so I'll, I'll go over it here, but uh, you'll see it more when we get into the playthrough. Um, but there's a uh, different use here for power-up cards. You still can get them in the game and, and, and like level yourself up um, and put these into your character stats, but that comes at a cost of time in most cases unless it's from a boss reward. Um, but there's what they do is they separate them. Uh, you draw a certain amount and create a timer deck which as you do things in the game and you pick story choices or you move like too much, uh, it'll spend time to do that. So you'll discard cards off the top of a timer deck. Once that runs out, it's over, right? Um, but there are ways to add to the timer deck, which is a restore mechanic. And you'll see sometimes it'll reward us with restoring time. Um, but if, if we have a chance to gain uh, a power-up card, we might not want to take that because it'll, it'll eat up on our time. So there's like, there's some cool choices that they've, I like this little mechanic here. I mean, it's sad when I'm discarding power-up cards, which are really my favorite thing in the game, uh, and I'm just discarding a pile on the table, and, and I'm not getting any goodies off them. Uh, it hurts a little bit. I cry inside, but uh, I understand why they do it. It's a very cool uh, time pressure mechanic for the campaign. So you have to be smart with it. Uh, and that's all explained here. There's triggered events. We'll, we'll talk about triggered events when we get to the actual chapter. Um, what else do we need to look at? There's circumstance tables. So in, in this, uh, when, when you pick a chapter or a prequel, It'll tell you which uh, cards, which circumstance cards to grab for that chapter. So you don't need to search for them. And you kind of set those aside and they're there, they're ready. Uh, and you basically, depending on where you are on the map, what type of terrain or what location, you will roll against a table of circumstance options and then you will face a specific circumstance. 
So instead of like uh, that bar that's in the normal game where you roll and you and you get a, a circumstance that you might know, you might be able to see, or one random off the deck, that doesn't happen anymore. You'll see how how it works. Um, but that's just explaining that stuff there. There are uh, enemies that are actually in the book. You'll see some of that in a sec. Uh, stat tests, of course. Uh, oh, this is one of my favorite things. Okay, one of my complaints about the Hexplorer system when I first got into it, it was the first game that I really saw. I mean, a lot of games have variants for decreasing and increasing the difficulty. But a game like this that I play, and I, I like that it takes a long time. Uh, but when I play Explore it, like we play it for hours and hours. And sometimes uh, when I'm not playing on a stream, we'll play it for like two hours. And, and we'll take our sweet time with the game. We'll take a break for like a day or two, come back, continue it. Just leave it set up on a table in another room. Um, but the difficulty, you decide in Hexplorer when to increase the difficulty in the base game. They added later ways of it increasing uh, in the rules of other games. But in the first Hexplorer, the Valley of the Dead King, that was only my one complaint was like, I don't know when to raise the difficulty, and I don't want to raise it too high, and then I'm dead, and now i got to create a new character, and all that work I put in my character is lost because I didn't know when was the best time to increase it. And there are people online that had ideas like do it after every couple bosses or whatever, like that kind of stuff. Um, but originally there was no way, it was just up to the player, you increase the difficulty as you go, uh, and as you increase it, the enemies get harder, but you, you increase your chance of getting, uh, bonuses, so like, a slight reward increase too, but you don't always get it, it's still a gamble. Um, and I didn't, I didn't really like that part where I wasn't sure when to, when to raise it and when not to, because I didn't know all the bosses and which ones you should play at lower difficulties, and that kind of stuff, but, in the campaign mode, uh, you do not increase the difficulty on your own, which I like to read this, that it tells me the, the difficulty will be raised at certain points in the story uh, based on choices and that kind of thing, but you can lose time, you can spend time to stop that, that increase from happening if you want. And the further in the chapters it goes, the more expensive it gets to squash that uh, difficulty increase. So I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, so yeah, we don't have to worry about raising the difficulty again. If you watched before and I was complaining about that in the first early playthroughs, um, you, you don't have to worry here. They changed that for the campaign, which is cool. This one I like. So when you have a character in this game, uh, you have like abilities that you can rank up and you can add traits and aspects and they have powers and all this kind of stuff. Um, but obviously in a campaign game, video game, board game, whatever, you always start at like your lowest, right? And as you go, you, you, you get experience, you increase stats, you find abilities, you find weapons, you upgrade your armor, you become, you know, a bigger, badder hero. Um, in this game, to do that, they've locked you out of, they've locked you out of uh, having your masteries, your trait power and your aspect, like your ability for your trait and your ability for your aspect are locked out until you access them in the game through like game mechanics. So as you play through the campaign, you'll you'll earn these things. Then you can level them up. So your character grows throughout the campaign, which is, I mean, I love that stuff. Um, so it's kind of cool. Feels weird from playing Hexplore it. Normally you start off, you have your power. It's not as good, but you can level it up and get better. Uh, this, you don't even have your uh, masteries yet. You're, they're not even on your, your board. So like every character is kind of like put in a weird spot for balance because when I was picking characters, I was like, Oh, this one has lower health. This one has lower attack. But the bit masteries are, are awesome when you get them leveled up. Oh, wait, never mind. I probably won't get that mastery for a while because I'm only playing the prequel. I'm assuming it comes later. Uh, and then you start leveling it up later, right? So uh, a little weird, but it is cool how they lock you out of the abilities. Uh, there is a gear upgrade limit. So you can see here, uh, you're limited to purchasing in the prequel only up to slot one of any of your abilities. So if you know Hexplore it, normally you can spend and go crazy on certain stats if you want, but you're only allowed to purchase up to slot one. It says here it's possible to receive gear upgrades beyond the purchase limit for the chapter. So I'm assuming when I'm given a gear upgrade, I can go above two or, or above one on the prequel, I think, when I'm given gear upgrades. But um, maybe Jonathan or James or somebody can, can let me know in the chat. If I'm allowed, when I get a free gear upgrade, am I allowed to, in the prequel, go to slot two? Do I mark that off, or do I just take the bump? I, I don't know. Um, but anyways, it's different. Anyone who knows Explorer, this is like weird to have like a limit here. Um, I guess, I think like volume two maybe had some limits at the beginning. Am I giving a good explanation, Kobold Gamer? <laughs> 
Uh, James says, yep, you can go above one in the prequel if the gear upgrade is given to you. Okay, perfect. That's what I thought from reading this because it says like, you know, it can go above the purchase. Just, just double checking. Just double checking. Okay. Uh, campaign items. So there's special items that are in the campaign. Uh, for hero death, uh, you can be revived at a shrine. Uh, one thing I wanted to explain, which I should have, uh, this story, this campaign, it takes place before the dead king arrives in the valley. Um, so this is before he's like messed with the shrines. So shrines like work better now. Uh, so you can revive yourself there if you're playing multiplayer. I'm assuming playing solo, I don't know how that would happen. Uh, <laughs> so that's like a little risk we're gonna take today. So if we die today, I'm totally blaming on you guys for the choices you make, because it's all on you uh, and not my dice rolls. Uh, so yeah, so we'll, we'll deal with, that's group death. Um, you can fail a chapter. There's specific ways for each chapter how you can fail. Uh, but specifically, if you run out of time in the timer deck, uh, you're done. You're done. Um, and, and you might read a specific chapter, I guess, for that. Or if all heroes are killed and you choose to fail the chapter, there is ways to create characters mid-chapter, um, which you can do if you want. New heroes mid-campaign, returning heroes. Um, tells you the components you use from the game. So you, we don't use the placards for like the city, the market, the black market and stuff. Uh, they have like new, like I said, there's new things uh, in this. So we'll just use these printouts I did uh, and laminated. We'll use those as like our placards for this because uh, they did change quite a bit of stuff. Rounding numbers, we round down to a minimum of one. Okay. Um, so it tells you the tokens. Uh, you use all these little tokens that come in uh, Valley of the Dead King, uh, but some of them work different, and they explain them here, what they do and how they're different. Um, blessings uh, work a little differently. They're explained here. I don't think we deal with those in the prequel, so we'll just skip over that for now. Um, accessing previous chapter maps. So you can see the map down here. It's huge. Uh, each chapter is like a region of the map. In the prequel, it's not connected to the main map, so we don't have to worry about this part. But just letting you know, there's like this cool thing that you can, uh, if you're playing like chapter three and you want to go back and try to find a boss or something from a previous chapter, you can wander off the map, like, or not wander, but you can leave your chapter section of the map and, and there's rules to how to go back to do things that you missed in previous chapters. Um, which is kind of like, I, the fact that they added those rules in and thought of a way to do that, it kind of makes my head hurt, but uh, it's possible for the crazy people who want to take that on. There's also Underground. Uh, anyone knows about the Under Valley stuff from the expansion, I think, that was added into the Valley of the Dead King. Um, but there are rules how going traveling underground works uh, on the map, which is neat. And we'll read this stuff uh, and go to it if we have to deal with it in our playthrough. Um, but just letting you guys know what's the thing. There's a way to score your adventure, okay? So if you're a psycho and you collect Valor points, um, which I always forget to write them down and stuff, <laughs> But if you like the Valor system, it's kind of like an achievement system built in the game, which I think is really cool. If you play all the different volumes, get all the expansions, there's little achievements you can try to do when you play this game, like killing certain bosses at certain levels or finding certain rare equipment or doing certain side quests and stuff. You will earn Valor points, which help boost your starting, um, your basically starting situation in, in the various Explorer games. In this game, the Valor doesn't help you at all at the start is my understanding, but you can track your score and based on your score, so you can play through this campaign and then play through it again and try to like up your score and see if you can get to like 220 plus points. And there's like all these ways you gain points. So if you, if you want to play this like multiple times and try to get really good at it, it, it the scoring mechanism is here. Totally optional. I, I, don't, I don't care for this stuff, but I know there's some people who love this Valor system and uh, it's here. Eric, thank you for subscribing. <laughs> All right, so this page, uh, I, I don't think this was in the printouts. I kind of wish it was, but uh, it is summarized down on the bottom here, the new turn sequence. So from a high level, and you'll see it multiple times today as we go through day after day after day. Um, but I just want to say there's a new, uh, a new phase called Sunrise. Uh, and sometimes things will happen there depending on the chapter you're playing or the situation. Uh, there might be triggered events. Um, but it's just increased the day counter. That's really all it does, but depending on what's going on, you'll see it might do other things there. Then we do a movement phase, which just changed slightly um, because we have to advance cards uh, for the timer deck. So that all happens based on how you're moving. It will take more time. Makes sense, right? Um, but a lot of the other stuff's the same about, you know, food, finding gold, all that kind of stuff. Uh, wandering, if you fail your explore role, or uh, 
Is that Explorer? I always forget the names. Uh, oh, God, I need a character map. But anyways, no, Explorer is gold. M movement? I forget the, the name. Oh, Navigate, right here. Derp, -a derp, -a derp. Uh, so Navigate roll uh, still can wander. Explore roll still finds gold or dirt. Um, and Survival helps you with food, you know, because this is a survival game. Uh, but I guess you can eliminate that part of the game if you want. Uh, but if you get your critical successes, you have a way to restore. Uh, there's a couple ways to restore time for getting critical successes, which is new, obviously, because there was no way to advance and restore a time deck in the original game. So that's why this is reworked to do the whole time mechanic in there. Uh, and then you still do circumstance and events, but they're based, they're like, they work different. So we don't play with quest cards. Uh, I was a little sad that quests aren't in here because that was like one of my favorite parts. But then when you realize like, wait, the whole book is a bunch of quests. Uh, so I'd rather have 500 pages of quest cards, basically, uh, storylines, instead of like just one little deck of cards. Uh, so it's really neat. They just basically beefed up the quest system is kind of what's what's happening a little bit, a little bit, but not really. Um, so the quest stuff's gone, um, but you'll do like circumstances and events. And then the villain phase is specific to the chapter, but in the villain phase, you also advance uh, another time and kind of track your days that way. So we'll deal with that. And there's an example of how it works. Uh, and since the boys are here, uh, I think there's a typo in this part. One hero succeeds on all three rolls. I think it's supposed to say if one hero critically succeeds on all three rolls, the group will restore one power. I just noticed I think that's a typo right there. Just FYI. <laughs> Not a big deal, but I just noticed that. I was like, wait, do I have to get three successes or three criticals? I'm pretty sure it's three criticals, uh, according to the, the printout. So here's the items, how they're different. So if you are at a city, uh, these are your items. And some items are the same as the base game. Some are different. Costs are different. Maybe they work a little differently. Uh, there's shrines. Uh, here's all the stuff you can do at shrines. There's something called a hamlet, uh, which is like kind of just has some things you can do there. Bezel Quark. If anyone knows Bezel Quark from the game, uh, he works differently. And here's all his items. So pretty much forget all the items that are in the base game. Not forget them all, but there are a bunch of different ones and they work different. So you kind of just need to know what's here. And again, uh, this is all right here on a printout version, uh, condensed from two sheets into one. Uh, so we'll be referencing this as we play. So you don't need to flip back here, but obviously they put the reminder here for the ribbon. Uh, so we can go back and forth if you need to, uh, to read a little more in depth how things work. There's the hexagon. <laughs> uh, so some of these abilities I think work different. There are specific ones to the campaign, specific abilities uh, or keywords, I should say, and conditions. Uh, they're all here, but again, I think they're on, yeah. There's also a printout sheet in the back of the book uh, with some condensed versions of those. Some are, some are not here, but you can just look them up on this page if they're not there, or uh, some of them you can even look up in the, in the main rule book if you need to, uh, which I was doing yesterday. And then opponents. So this encounter deck thing, uh, which is an add-on from the fourth volume, uh, I do not have this. I could not find it. I don't think it's out yet. That explains it here, actually. Domain of Mirrors and Octus. Um, this can add things in. Uh, talks about the boss power-up rewards. They don't come from the timer deck. You gain those from the restore deck. Uh, but it explains the opponents, like where they come from. So it'll tell you if you're pulling them from a living card deck or from an expansion boss or uh, the base game uh, deck and that kind of stuff. Swarms and Hordes. Uh, so if anyone's seen or owns or has played or looked into a Volume 3, The Sands of Shirax, that introduced swarms and hordes, uh, which was this whole thing with outlasts. I read through this like a couple days ago. I'll read through it again if we see a horde, but I didn't see a horde when I was playing yesterday. I'll need to refresh myself on how this works, but the cool part is they include the full rules here. So you do not need to own volume three or know how those work. They explain it right here, but it is an additional kind of nice thing they added later to Hexplorer, which was neat, just to add some variability to your combats and stuff. Uh, they've included some of those in the book and they explain how they work right here. And you'll see some of them on this page, like Goblin Mob, okay? And you'll notice the cards are printed like um, the first style, like how the first game, I think the second printing of the first game, I think was what it was. But there's like no art on these cards, they're kind of like ho-hum. 
Uh, and all the art was like included in like a side book or whatever, I think is what, what happened there. Um, but they have some art here for these and they include them, you know, so if you're used to this style, they're here. But then in the back, I think is what's happening here. Uh, yes, in the back they have them in the encounter um, that, that come in that encounter deck version, like the new, the new version with the art on the cards like reformatted. Uh, which is what comes in, I think, this encounter deck product that is on volume four. It's on the same page as the book. Okay, just so you guys understand what's happening there. Um, so we could use this page or you can use these pages if you're just used to this aesthetic and you, you want to use that. I just use these ones because uh, they're near the front and it was just easier to get to. Um, but as you see here, these are all new like bosses and things to fight. And you may see them and you may not. Here's a boss. These bosses are specific. I'll go kind of quick over those. So creating a hero. It's optional, of course, to play with traits and aspects. You may not have those in your game if you just have the base game. Talks about record keeping, heroic moments. Okay, this is kind of neat. So heroic moments can happen in the story. Uh, and it's kind of as you're reading through. Where is that? As you're reading through like a, a section of story in a passage, uh, you'll reach the spot with the little sword in the stone there, the yellow, and it'll ask if you have a specific role, a race, an aspect, whatever. And if you are playing with that type of character, you might have a different option available to you to do a heroic moment. And uh, just they put a whole page here to humble brag how many are in the in the in the game. So heroic moments can happen. Uh, there's over two thousand of them weaved into the story. Okay. So if you're choosing your character and you're like, oh man, last time I played healer, there's 35 heroic moments for a healer. But now if I'm playing a healer that eats zero or one food rating, there's five more possible heroic moments. And if I'm playing with the elemental aspect, there's 23 other heroic moments. Some of them might overlap. Um, and then if I'm playing like the illusionist, there's 45 heroic moments specifically for the illusionist. And if I'm playing like a pixie, there's 32 more heroic moments. So based on your party, especially if you're playing more players and people are using all these different aspects, roles, races, and all the combinations, because that's one of the insane things of Explorer, how many choices. It takes me like three hours to set up a game because I'm just two and a half of that's picking my character. Um, <laughs> there is tons of options. So all this stuff is only from the base game, the expansion, uh, and the hero chest, I believe. So you can play with other roles and races and aspects and stuff from the other games but it's not meant for that so you'll have to kind of house rule it how it works um and there's called what's called the rule of cool which explains how as a group if you feel that your uh your race your uh character whatever your role uh from a future game you feel that they could do something in the game at this point for this heroic moment like even though it says only the scoundrel could do it but you're playing another character, it's like the thief or something, I don't know. Uh, the rogue or whatever. I, I don't know what the characters all are, but you, you could say, well, they should be able to do it too. And you could just house rule it, the rule of cool. Uh, <laughs> rule of cool. Anyways, uh, and you could just make it happen. Do whatever you want. And there's some optional sample rules here you can just do to give you some heroic moments. Um... There are tons of optional. Oh, okay. Uh, let me just fix this guy here. Okay. All right. Uh, anyways, so uh, we're going to continue here going through. Uh, so also for the campaign mode, uh, certain heroes, there are specific roles and races. Uh, there's modifications to make their abilities not OP in campaign mode. Um, so those rule corrections are here. So if we pick one of these, like the Beastmaster, the Necromancer, Shaman, Summoner, uh, Dragonkin, Elf, Half-Elf, Shade, Highlander, they have revisions to how they work. Uh, and the Strength and Keyword has a little bit of a nerf too, uh, just so you don't get crazy. Uh, but I like how they worked in balance here. They thought about like keeping it balanced as the difficulty progression happens. Um, I, I like that. All right, so chapter layout. Uh, 
Here's how the chapters are laid out, which we'll go through this specifically in the section, but I just want to show you, it explains all this stuff here, but I'm kind of showing all this stuff. It might be kind of boring for some, um, but I think it helps you understand the product and how it's different. So some people don't like to change up their game too much or want to know how it's different when you add on some variant or some module or expansion, like how much more rules do you have to learn? How is it so different? Uh, there's quite a few different things, but it still feels like explore it. But this, I'm just showing you, explains very well what's different, very well gets you into it. Uh, and they put a lot of, like, around 33 pages now of it kind of showing you how this whole thing works. So it's like, you know, 30 something pages of a rule book that you have to know in addition to the base game rules. But a lot of the stuff in the base game isn't used. So as long as you know co uh, combat and that kind of stuff, uh, you should be okay. So it explains the game turn sequence, all that stuff. I, I won't go over all this stuff specifically, um, but we can look at it if we need to. And then boom, there's the prequel. Okay, this explains how kind of the sections work, but all this stuff, you will understand watching us play through it, okay? Um, and you guys will be part of it. You guys are gonna help us make choices and decisions right from the character creation. We're gonna, we're gonna take some time. So anyone who doesn't care about picking a character, a role, a race, all that kind of stuff, um, go grab your coffee now, go take a washroom break. We're going to have some fun with that. Um, and yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, okay. So, uh, oh. so speaking of, uh, heavy products, uh, this is the hero chest for those that haven't seen it. Um, and in here is where I keep, uh, our rolls. All right. Yeah. Rolls. So we have the roles for the expansion and the base game I've sorted out here already. So just from the Valley of the Dead King and the expansion, uh, this is why I was joking it takes two and a half hours to create my character, um, because there's so many roles to choose from, okay? <laughs> and I make jokes about this every time. I know, I'm sorry, it's old. Uh, and then we got aspects, or sorry, these are traits, right? Traits, yep. So the traits, we have a whole bunch that came in the expansion uh, for the Valley of the Dead King. So we'll, we'll pick one of those. We'll put with those in the side. Uh, we're not going to use any from the other volumes. So we'll simplify our choices a bit. But again, you can if you want, but you just got to like house rule some stuff. Okay, I've got some things stuck. Oh, I'll fix that later. Okay. And then uh, we have... Uh, our race. Oh, let's just make sure we're only pulling from Valley of the Dead King. Which you could just look on the symbols on the on the <laughs> like it's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Alright. Uh so yeah, tons of races to choose from if you own the base game, plus the expansion adds a few more. Uh, so this is what we'll be choosing from. And then there's aspects too, right? So there's aspects that came uh, with the hero chest. And they have the symbol on it there, so you can choose one of these. It will further change your stats, uh, adjust your food rating, gives you another ability, uh, or a few abilities I guess. So we can pick one of these, but again, you're locked out of the, the abilities um, at the beginning. But we'll choose because, uh, again, you don't have to play with this stuff, it's optional. But I want to see some of those heroic moments. And to increase our odds of seeing heroic moments, obviously the more, uh, you know, different, um, you know, roles, races, and aspects you have, uh, you'll get to choose, uh, you'll have better odds of seeing them. <laughs> oh man. He could become exhausted. <laughs> Don't over exert yourself. Yes, I agree. <laughs> oh, you guys are hilarious. <laughs> okay. So, uh, normally when I'm playing solo in the expansion, they have these exclusive roles, which are like two roles together. So, this one's striker and utility. So, it kind of meshes two of the characters from the base game together. Buffs up their stats a little bit. You're meant to play with these. They're recommended when you're playing solo or two player at the lower player counts. So I have three to choose from. I'll probably just grab from these um, just to keep it straightforward. But like I said, if you own the base game and the expansion, 
Uh, you know, you can pick an assist character, a healer, striker, uh, utility, and they all have different abilities, different starting stats, uh, skills, abilities, all this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, and again, like, you'll see different heroic moments uh, presented to you based on the role, um, you know, and all that kind of stuff, uh, which is neat. Okay. Oh, yo, yo, okay. Bernardo's here. Greetings from a cave near playing poker with a water loa and an earth loa, taking advantage of having the malum inside. <laughs> nice, Bernardo. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Um... All right. So, uh, I, I figure you guys can choose which one of these three we, we, we take. So we got Beast Lord. Again, we're locked out of the Masteries. Um, so we'll just play with whichever one. I'll put a poll in the live chat here as quick as I can. Which is a roll, right? Which roll? Uh, what do we want? Beast Lord. Uh, Spellblade. And Vagabond. All right, so I put a poll in the live chat if you're watching. Uh, if you're new here and you haven't seen before, we do these polls when we're doing like kind of playing along and making choices. Uh, so open up the live chat. If you're on mobile or on PC, you can vote on the poll. I'll leave it open for like a minute and then you guys can decide which role I play with. Uh, without any explanation other than the name. That's all you're going to get. Because again, we're locked out of the masteries at the beginning, so who cares. Um, the spell blade starts with three attack, two defense, uh, one on navigate. Two on Explore, one on Survival, eight Health, eight Energy. Okay, those are like the base stuff you need to know. Uh, but if you look here at the Beast Lord, he starts with five attack, but only one defense. He's got um, two Navigate, two Survival. It's like, the, it's like the opposite here. But his health, because his defense is low, I think they give more health. He's got a little more energy. And then the Vagabond, he's got only two attack, but he's better on defense. Uh, he's, he's okay at navigating, but kind of stinks at the other two, one and one. And then he has nine health and ten energy. Okay? So we'll go with whatever, and based on how much gold we get at the start, we can, like, kind of buy upgrades and kind of buff each stat, like, one, or, well, depending on how much money we get. Um, so we might not be able to adjust that too much. Uh, but go ahead and vote in the live chat, and then I'll just go with whatever one you guys would like to see. Kind of, kind of make it fun. And I didn't play with any of these yesterday when I was playing. I purposely played with, um, I think I did the Berserker. I just, it was the first one in the box. I just grabbed it and played it. Uh, I, I think only had one heroic moment come up for me based on my, uh, based on the uh, role. I didn't play with an aspect. And that's what I'm going to do today. I didn't play with an aspect yesterday, so I didn't see anything related to that, obviously. Uh, and then based on my uh, race, I didn't, I don't think I saw any based on the race. And, or my trait. Or maybe I didn't, I didn't think I played with a trait yesterday, actually. <laughs> didn't Rob always look like a vagabond? Keith says, if you play with your significant other, would she become your hex wife? Uh, not if you play cooperatively properly, but if you play a competitive version, then yeah, maybe. No worries, James. No worries. Understood. Get back to work, James. Uh, working on the next volume, if you can, please. <laughs> oh, and James also says, should point out that if you play as an exclusive role, both of the role types, healer, assist, striker, whatever, will count towards heroic moments. I thought that I was actually going to ask that. Uh, I was actually going to ask that. And, and yeah, thank you for reminding me. Uh, so we'll increase our odds, and, and I didn't play with one of these yesterday, so maybe that's also uh, based on my choices and things. All right, let's see what you guys voted for. I'm going to close the poll. Ryan V says, I do hope we get a Rob's rant about something not Hexploit related. 
so those newbies to the channel can get the full Rob experience. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> try to stay, I'll try to stay on topic today. Uh, so it looks like the Beast Lord, 36%, Spellblade, 32, Vagabond, 30. All right, so we're playing with the Beast Lord. Okay, Beast Lord's in. Okay, we're going to play with the Beast Lord. Uh, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to use this sheet. And let me write on here. So my, any, oh, anyone have any names for the Beast Lord? Or do we want to wait till we do races first? Uh, yeah, let's, let's figure out what, what their race is and stuff like that. So, uh, man, there is too many to choose from. I, I can't do a poll. Maybe I can narrow it down. But like, like, look, this is crazy. Like, uh, well, we won't play with the Sapphire Golem. He's like the OP rare one. Uh, we can do random, actually. Let's do random. Yeah, let's do random. Let, let's get nuts with it. Normally, I don't do this. I normally pick because I look at stats. So you guys pick the Beast Lord. So what I start doing when I'm playing Hexplore it, especially solo, I start looking at these skills and I start seeing how low they are and I maybe want to beef some of these up. It is a survival game. Food is, you know, never underestimate your hunger because uh, you can die from starving, okay? You never want to be starving in this game uh, or the game will end soon for you. So maybe I look at some stuff that has, uh, usually I look for a lower food rating, but I think in the campaign they kind of address that a little bit too. Uh, so I think you start with like a multiple of your food rating. Maybe that's normal. Uh, but yeah, there's like so many. So many, this is crazy. Crazy. Oh, draw three? Okay, yeah, Pierre, good, good recommendation, Pierre. We'll draw three and we'll, we'll do a poll between them. Yeah, I like min-maxing for sure, uh, a little bit. Like, they're, they're very balanced, so usually, most of them are. <laughs> uh, so like, you see here, what I'm talking about is uh, they kind of adjust the stats on your main character. So like, your, your character starts with specific stats, but you write in the number based on these two added together. So, uh, and, and that determines your food rating also. And you get a little ability out of it. So like, obviously some of them here buff your navigation, buff your survival. If I, if I need that buff, I will kind of limit it down to those characters, right? Or those races. Um, so we'll throw this one to the side. Okay, we'll just do a little shuffle. And then we'll pick three at random. And then you guys can choose between. We'll look at each one what they do. Yeah, Frank, 100% we'll look at how the Beast Lord's different. Uh, I did look at it earlier today just to make sure. Uh, but I, we'll look at it again. Because he does get to grab like a creature right away, right? And then one per chapter or something like that. Okay. One, two, three. What did we get? What do we get today? Please be good. Oh, we got one exclusive. <laughs> one exclusive. Oh, boy. Uh, so that one has a food rating of three, so we're a big boy. It's a Morlock. Uh, and at the bottom here you can read, Morlocks are savage and nefarious. Once per game turn after defeating an opponent, you may spend one health and one energy to consume their remains to heal health and energy equal to twice your opponent's level. And his favorite opponent, so you get to roll like an extra damage die against humanoids. Okay, and it buffs our navigate, buffs our explore. The problem is it doesn't buff survival and it wants to eat more food. That's kind of scary. Um, abilities. Uh, oh, plus attack and defense. That's good because remember, we don't have our masteries right away. So getting a buff on those is kind of like, eh, whatever, right now. But getting extra health and energy is great. I, I like this one. I like this one. Uh, the other one, I guess I could do it this way. The other one is the Al Alumon? Alumon? Ilumon. Uh, they are creatures shrouded in light and are natural healers. Once per game turn for two energy, you may raise each ally's health. When I read allies when I'm playing true solo, yes, you can find NPCs to escort, to fight beside you. But when you're playing only one true hero, you don't always have someone else in your party. So when it's like, you know, once per game turn for two energy, you may raise each ally's health by two. But then there's, or your own health by four. So in this case, it's fine. 
But once I read like it's a, a more of a supporting power, then I'm like, ah, get out of here. But this works because we can heal ourselves by four if I just kept reading. Uh, food rating of one. Ooh, I like. I like ELO food ratings. And then a nice, beautiful lizard man whose favorite opponent is Spirit. Food rating of two. Oh, yeah, we didn't look at the buffs on the other one. Plus four energy, plus your... Mer See, first and second masteries, I don't think I care about that through the prequel, really, but... Uh, again, we would start a new character, too, if we play through the chapters, so don't worry about this character playing through the whole campaign. Uh, we'll do this over again when we play that later in the year. Um, but yeah, the Lizard Man... Gets some extra defense, I like that. Lizard men are apathetic and stealthy. Once per combat, for two energy, you may hide to negate any damage you would otherwise suffer. And you may use an item on yourself or an ally. Negate. Um, negate. Do we have that in our hexagon? <clears throat> Negate. Stops and removes an effect or attack and all of its side effects. Okay. So I'm going to put these in a poll. <coughs> Excuse me. Tickle, tickle. Alright. Let's get a poll in there. Uh, more lock. Come on. And lizard man. Matt says, just don't do a combo that's too extreme. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Jigek says, if I'm saying that right, says, Morlock Beast Lord sounds great. <laughs> he says, big time machine fan voting Morlock. <laughs> you guys are funny. All right. Uh, so get your votes in in the chat if you guys just joined in. We're doing a poll to decide. Uh, we already picked our Beast Lord, and we're deciding if it's a Lizard Man Beast Lord, an Illumon, Illumon, if I'm saying that right, or a Morlock Beast Lord. Here's the art on the back of the Beast Lord, uh, which is really cool. I always forget to flip these over, uh, but there's cool art on the back of every one of these, which is sad because I always forget to look. I'm so worried about the game, uh, you know, stats and my character abilities. Uh, but there's definitely some cool stuff on the back here. And while you guys are voting, I'm just trying to kill time, as you can tell, right? <laughs> plenty more, plenty more. All right. <clears throat> okay, let's close the poll. And see what we're playing with today. All right, so Morlock 47%, Lizard Man 34, Illumon 18. So we're going Morlock, exclusive for the win. All right. Um, the trait? Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, actually, let's do our aspect first. Let's do the same thing with the aspects. Marcel, I don't know what an Illumon is. I have no idea. It says they are... Creatures shrouded in light and are natural healers. That's all I know. <laughs> That's, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe somebody in the chat can answer, like, who created that, uh, who put that in the game, maybe can answer. Jonathan, I'm looking at you. All right. One, two, three. So these are optional. They come in that hero chest. You don't need them, but we're just trying to increase our chance for heroic moments. So we got... Uh, Humankind, Fey Kind, and Goblinoid. And as you can see here, they also modify your stats. You can choose one to, to reduce here for your uh, 
first and second masteries. It, also a food rating modifier. Ugh. So the problem is it's going to buff our food rating. But we don't get this ability yet. This is kind of weird, actually. I don't know. But I trust them. But we do have this one that reduces the food rating, which our food ratings are three. <laughs> so that's how much food we're going to need to eat every turn. And then, oh, look at that. Humankind, you gain bribe proficiency. Doesn't modify food. They all have abilities. I don't think we'll get to see these abilities today, but just for the... the, the just for the... The buff to stats or whatever, you can see those there. Um, and I'll quickly do a poll for that. Again, it's all just random, uh, except for the stats, I guess, and we'll have some fun with that. So, uh, let's do... I'm just going to get the poll in there first, and then we can read some of the stuff on the cards. That way you guys can make a choice. Uh, Goblinoid. Human or Fey? Whoops, where did that go? Fey. Hey Edgar, how's it going? Good to see you again. Anything but humankind will end you? Is that because the stats like reduce? I mean on the Fey though. The fake gives us, oh, minus two attack. Yeah, that'd be kind of rough, but, oh man, yeah. This is risky, like, we're gonna have some fun today. The cool part today, playing through this prequel, I'm okay if we don't win and we don't see a lot of it. As long as we see a few things and some options come up. Today's just supposed to be a demo of what this campaign mode works like, what it looks like, some of the cool things in the book, but I don't want to spoil that much for you guys. If we make it to the end of the prequel, we'll, we might see completely different stuff than if you played it. But it's meant to be just a demo kind of to learn the game with. But we, I'm assuming we can die in it. There is, it tells us to read certain things if we die. Uh, I didn't die yesterday, so I haven't seen what will happen uh, if that's the case. But uh, again, if we pick some silly combination today that kind of like starts us off in trouble, uh, that's okay. <laughs> we'll go as far as we can. We'll go as far as we can. <laughs> um... But yeah, Edgar's right, man. These are <laughs> these are a little rough. Like like the Fey, look what it does to our our navigate and our survival. Like, but then again, it takes away a food rating. So like, is that good that it reduces that? I don't know. I don't know. So a goblinoid says you are a little larger. What does it say? You are a little larger than your kin, and your teeth protrude slightly. Uh, one might say your personality is your least likable trait. I, I can relate. Uh, most recoil with aversion when they look at you. Yeah, this, this like really sings to me. This uh, really sings to me. Uh, I can relate to the goblinoid. I can relate. A foul temper. Yeah, I can see that. While you have zero energy. And you know when I start crying in the game when my dice rolls aren't going for me and start getting mad when I don't draw the cards I need. Yep, you, you guys see that all here live and unedited. Uh, while you have zero energy, increase the damage you deal with your attack ability by half. So this stuff we probably won't see, right? Like this stuff's locked out, so. Oh, Jonathan says we're going to create a race book at some point to help with those questions. Ah, cool. Cool, cool, cool. There is, um, where is it? I know there's this book, uh, the storybook. That, uh, I thought there's some stuff in here, right? That comes with the game, that like additional starting stuff, but then there's like, oh, city triggers. I thought there was, I mean, it was just like write-ups on like items and things. Oh, thank you. Nice. We got a tea delivery. Sweet. Yeah, I thought there was more lore stuff. There is some stuff on enemies in this book. Um, some short stories about things. But yeah, I guess there's no, nothing on the races, right? Bosses. Learn all... Oh! There's Goblin Emperor Click. That's what this whole campaign's based around this guy. Click's Madness. Right? 
He's a boss in the game. Oh, I love, I love the art on this guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, read all about the Dead King. Yeah, this is some cool stuff. All right, anyways, I thought there might have been some things in there about that, those things, but there's some additional story stuff in there. That's cool. All right, let's close the poll. Let's figure out our aspect. Uh, <laughs> Brian says, do your best, Rob. That's all we can expect. Uh, Faye, 46%. All right, fake kind it is. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. And then, I don't know if traits, uh, Jonathan, maybe you know. I, I don't think traits do the heroic moments, right? We could just play without one of these just to get into it quicker here. Uh, heroic moments, uh, roll, race, size, or food rating. Aspect heroic moments, role heroic moments, race heroic moments. I don't think the traits matter, right? Like whether I'm a leader or vengeful. Traits do not trigger heroic moments. Okay, thank you. Then we won't take the time to make a poll for that. <laughs> we'll just play with that one. Okay, but you can use them in the game. They are locked out at the beginning though. You have to o open them up uh, and earn them basically. All right, perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, all right. So let's do this. All right, so we have a fey kind, which your skin shines with slight iridescent hue, and it is apparent you are descended from a beautiful creature. Ooh. Okay, but I'm a Morlock, which is savage and nefarious. Okay. And I'm a beast lord. Okay, so I'm a fey kind Morlock beast lord. Uh, so if anyone has any names we can use, uh, drop those in the chat. Uh, any funny names? Uh, much appreciated. Some clever fey Morlock beast lord kind of name. So we kind of control creatures is what we do in the game, which we can summon them if we get our first mastery going. And we'll read about the alternate uh, change rules for this guy. So let's see, Beast Lord. So it says, uh, Beast Lord has a passive change. At the beginning of each chapter, I don't know if that counts the prequel, gain the lowest level non-swarm horde creature that you don't already possess. Additionally, anytime the group encounters a creature that is not in your pack, you may choose to skip combat with one instance of the creature and add it to your pack, if it's not already. You may not add swarm and horde encounters to your pack. Okay. And normally the Beast Lord says, uh, anytime a creature type encounter appears as, you, uh, as a circumstance, take the card and add it to your pack. So I don't know if we go grab one right now from our, our cards. Uh, there is, oh, there are a couple creatures. So I think, I think we're supposed to go grab the mangy wolves right now and, and capture them um, to put them in our pack. But again, I'm not sure if you do that for the prequel. But it says, it says the beginning of each chapter. Um, but we, we can play without it for now, it's fine. All right, let's see. Rotok, Bob, Jonah, Jonah Hex, Minnie, Slurgan's daughter. <laughs> what? Mephobe, Borfolk, Hexy Beast. <laughs> uh, I agree, Dar. I would add Dar Demure just to complete it. Rog, Ra, Ra Rog Shiny Eyes, Ra Rug Shiny Eyes. <laughs> All right, uh, Jagek, I'm going with that one. I'm going with that one. Thank you, everybody. Let's. <laughs> uh, I saw that was funny. All right, mini Slurkin's daughter. All right, we're gonna go with. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use this this sheet. Uh, so R H A R O O G. My writing is horrible, by the way. I'm sorry. So Ra Rogue 
Rarog shiny eyes. I know, I'm gonna say that so many different ways. Exemplary effort. <laughs> oh man, Chewy. <laughs> okay, so our role is um, Beast Lord. Okay, our race is Morlock. Aspect is Fey. Kind. So the cool part is I, I put, I laminated this. I laminated this here. Um, but you could print, the idea is you print them. Uh, as you play through each campaign, you print out one of these, uh, these roll sheets or whatever. You write all your stuff on there as you play through a chapter. When you get to the end of the chapter, start a new chapter, grab a new sheet, transfer your stuff over. Because if you fail during a chapter, you can reset back to the beginning of the chapter. So if you already have your previous sheet from a previous cha chapter, how it ended, you can easily recreate your character. Um, but me doing it on here, obviously I'm doing it temporary today. And we're playing the prequel, and then I'm just going to wipe it out after and not care. But normally, you'd probably want to print out the paper one, use pencil, and like write on it. Um, or you could just use like dry erase and take a picture uh, is what I like to do too if we you know are, are worried about losing the the status or the state we're in uh, no trait no trait I'm not gonna write in our abilities um, but normally when you play for the campaign we would cover up our masteries and they're locked out for us, okay? So we do not have these abilities yet. Uh, you also cover up, I believe this, yeah, it shows it right here. We would cover up our trait, our masteries, and our um, aspect ability. So for the Fey kind, uh, it says you can heal but with, a, but, but, sorry, you can heal with but a touch. Um, but it says you may use your first mastery in a new way, spend energy to trigger your first mastery. Uh, but we don't have our first mastery yet, so we'll just ignore that also. Okay. So now we're going to do the, the math, the super complex math of trying to figure out all of our starting stats. Um, so our max health is 12 from the Beast Lord, plus 4 uh, from a Morlock, 16, and then minus 1 from the Fey Kind. So what did I say? So we're at 15? Max. Okay. Uh, then we need our energy, which is eight, nine. I don't see energy. Yep, yeah, plus two. Uh, Eleven. Well, that's good. Okay, our combat is five. Our attack, five, six, seven, but then back down to five. Okay, uh, what else do we need? Defense, one, two, three, uh, three. Okay, and then uh, we got those, our, let's do our skills. We're, our masteries are gonna say zero, uh, so we don't use them yet. They're, they're not, they're not in, in here. We don't, we don't have access to them yet. And then so our skills navigate is two, three, four, back down to three. Our explore is one, two, three. To find that gold. Uh, our survival is, where is it? Two, one. Oh no, it's a minus one off the fey. So. We literally on a D10 when we're trying to find uh, food and not have to eat, or sorry, yeah, to, to not have to consume all of our food, uh, we're gonna have to roll a one on a D10. So we definitely need to get that stat up or we're gonna be in trouble. Yeah, I'm a little worried about that. But uh, so our food rating is three, but then minus one from the fake kind. So our food rating is two. Not bad, that's not bad. Um, but it's the survival roll that scares me. Okay, I think that's all we need to write in there. Now we just need to figure out our... Um, so I'll just throw these off the side.
Yeah. And that's all they. Re oh yeah, our, our uh, we need our favorite opponent, humanoid, and that's up here. So so the favorite opponents in the game, you can get a whole bunch of different ones here, and you just get to like roll extra dice against them. Uh, but humanoid is the one we have. I like the way they did this on this sheet. Uh, you see my sloppy writing in previous playthroughs, like trying to track my luck stones and potions and stuff. I like the way you could just write a number in there. Uh, cause like I would accidentally erase like too many things on my backpack, but they, they, the backpack's lined up. We've got a day counter on here, a reminder of the roll. Then on the back, your aspect, your trade, if you want to write those in, conditions you have, campaign items, whether they're captured or gifted, more backpack space. I love it. I just, I put this on the back uh, and laminated it, but they're normally two separate sheets. So you could just have them on a clipboard and kind of flip between them. That's how I was playing yesterday. Okay. So, let's go. Make some room here. Uh, we'll just do this. Okay. We're not, we're not using this. I'm just going to keep this out, but we're like really just playing off here. So, uh, but we'll just keep it all here. Okay. Anything I missed? Shomar, what's up, man? Uh, RAR for short. <laughs> all right. We'll call him RAR. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's go down to the book. So we're going to get to, so we're playing the prequel, Trouble at the Gates. So anyone that doesn't want any spoilers for the game, we're done explaining how it's different. Now we're going to get into the gameplay, but to actually show the gameplay flow and how, how this campaign is different from regular Explore It, uh, we're going to see some spoilery stuff. Again, it's the prequel. It's what you're supposed to play to kind of learn the ropes. Um, and again, if you play through, you'll see different things than if I play through, because we'll make different choices. But uh, it is spoilers, so if you, if you plan on playing this book later and you want to go in super fresh, uh, you go away now. Go away now. I will not spoil anything from chapter 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, so yeah, don't worry about that, but you might see spoiler stuff, uh, you will see spoiler stuff from the prequel, okay? Just so you guys know. Your last, your last warning, get out now. Oh yeah, the food and gold. Uh, that's where I was going to, thank you Frank. I was going here to actually, uh, thanks for reminding me what I was trying to do in the book. Uh, I wanted to go through this. So we selected a role in the race. Uh, we didn't take a trait. It was optional. Optional. Uh, we selected an aspect. You may gain access to it later in the game, it says. Okay. You fill in your stats. Now gain starting gold. This stuff uh, is a little different, I think. Each hero will roll a hex die and gain the resulting number of gold. This roll may explode. And then you gain starting food, which is three times their food rating. I think it's initial food rating, which is the one I have right now after modifications from the different stuff. Um, purchase supplies. Gold may be spent on gear upgrades up to the chapter limit during chap uh, character creation. Okay, so we'll go through that right now. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. I, I was going to do that and, and go through that, but I, I was trying to remember why I was going back to the book and try to figure out. I knew there was more I had to do. Um, thank you for helping me out. Yeah, because I still have empty boxes here. So we roll a hex die, so that's the one through six. Uh, hex is six, and when it says it explodes, means if you roll the six, you can roll again and, and add it together. And when something explodes, there's no limit. You can just keep exploding. Hey Mel, how's it going? All right, here we go. One, we got a one. Fantastic. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, that sucks. So, like, we can't even buy a single gear upgrade. Oh, no! That's not good. Starting food, three times our food rating, so six food to start. And, yeah, purchasing gear upgrades. So, if I look at the gear upgrades, I, this sheet kind of shows them bigger, or this board. So I can buy this one for two, this one, get, get like raise my max energy or health. 
Uh, I could raise my attack, my defense. Those cost four, though. Down here, these cost three. So this this sucks. I can't, I can't even buy any. I would like to upgrade my uh, survival, but uh, yeah, we're we're kind of in trouble. We're in trouble. All right, got to figure it out. Got to figure it out. This might be a short stream. Longer to create a character than it, it'll take to play through. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Trouble at the gates. All right. So how a chapter starts off, uh, it explains what uh, components you need. So in this case, we need specific tiles, which I grabbed. Um, we need specific tiles. We need specific circumstances, which are explained right here. Um, the, pa the timer deck, we aren't creating it yet. It says determine during the first few chapter passages. So we don't even know what our timer is set to, but usually it'll tell you right here, I guess. Uh, but this will be created as we read through the story. We're going to be making a choice, but it says to get familiar with the end conditions. So how it's going to end good or bad, what we're working towards. We need to know that. Okay. We need to know that. Uh, and then it shows our character map, how it's set up, any specific hexes that are important. Uh, and then our triggered events. So when certain things happen, we're going to have to look at this every single round and kind of go through it. Uh, and if certain things happen, we follow those entries in the book. Okay. And for example, at the beginning of the first villain phase, read, pay, uh, read entry 070. Okay. Uh, at sunrise, if you have the, um, what is that called again? Campaign status. If you have the campaign status, uh, true heroes or heavy burden, the group must consume two food total each sunrise. If you cannot read 039 uh, passage. And then we have in the skill phase, two triggers we're looking out for. If we critically succeed on a navigate or uh, explore, we got to go do a circumstance and read 46. And if we have a explore group success, there's some stuff to do for that. If we get to the Eastern ruin or the Western ruin, uh, there's a, we've got to do a circumstance and read a specific entry. Okay. So these little things will, will get you going in the book and kind of help guide you a little bit. Um, but here's the end condition. Win condition is return to the shrine of seasons with knowledge of the man's missing family. If you do read 33, the lose conditions, it ends with the heroes unsuccessful. If any of the following conditions are met, if all heroes are killed, we read 29. If the group must advance, but is unable to do so. So if the timer deck runs out 68, and the group reaches an ending campaign passage through decisions they've made. So we could just something happen. I, I don't know what, but uh, yeah, based on us making a poor choice, could lead to like going into a trap or I, I don't know. We could just, we could just die, I guess. Uh, we'll find out. It's part of the fun. Uh, so yeah. So I've gathered the cards, done. Uh, so let's read, I guess. Let's read. Uh, I could just restart the setup and pick the same things. I know Pontus, I was only joking. I was only joking. <laughs> All right, here we go. Good luck, adventurers. All right. Pay attention. You guys are going to help me with, there's a decision right at the end here. We're going to make a choice. So pay attention to the narrative, okay? I'll try to read it as best I can. But I apologize if I have trouble pronouncing things. You have called... The Shrine of Seasons, your home. Oh yeah, I gotta set up the map. Gotta set up the map. This will make more sense. This will make more sense as we read it. Okay, one sec, one sec. Uh, yeah, let's set up the map first. This will make more sense. Okay, so there is a shrine here. It's called the Shrine of Seasons. This little white uh, area up here is called the North Ridge. This rune here is called the Eastern Rune. Okay, this is the Western Rune. And then there's like a whole section here surrounded by yellow borders, which is known as the Southern Steps, Southern Steeps, Steps, Steps. Uh, this little dwarven castle thing here is a hag dermish, it's known as. So maybe there's something interesting there. Um, but certain places based on where you are, 
Uh, there's a circumstance table, so based on the type of place we're at, we'll roll against that. There's specific chapter items and statuses, and uh, that's all here. And then the passages, okay? So you guys will see that stuff as we go. But yeah, lots of stuff that's specific to uh, the chapter, which is neat. And just to show you, so this is the prequel, okay? This is the prequel, so obviously a little lighter, not a lot going on here. You know, just one little page of circumstances and chapter. This is just to give you a taste. But let me show you the printout for chapter one, for example. So this is just the printout. But look how the, the triggered events and the size of the map for chapter one is. Just for example, to show you how the regular chapters are much larger, much more going on. They're more in depth. This is just the prequel. It's light. I think we can even just go... I can show you, um, so chapter, chapter one of Threatened Dragonsport, for example, there's the map, look at how much stuff there is here, okay, look at, look at how big the deck is in here, lots of triggered events, look at the tables here, like all different tables based on where you are on the map and your type of terrain and the items and statuses. This is what a normal chapter weight is, it looks like, okay? Just so you know, I just want you to understand not everything's as, as basic as this tiny, cute little triggered event table here, okay? Like, it eventually gets serious. <laughs> just so you guys know, it gets meatier, juicier in the later chapters. They're bigger, longer, more epic. So if you're looking for that stuff, that's the reason why this is 500 pages. Because those chapters are huge. This is just a, a, a baby chapter, okay? We're in a baby chapter, okay? Nom nom nom. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right. But I don't want to spoil any of that other stuff. So we just, I just want to show that because I, I thought when I was looking through and seeing how many pages were in the other chapters, I was like blown away. All right. Uh, okay, let's read. You are called. Here we go. Let's do this. So it says you've called the Shrine of Seasons uh, your home for all of your lives. The whole of the Runecrest Valley lay beneath you, the perils and troubles of the land only drawing your attention when a dedicated traveler conquered the arduous rocky road leading to the Shrine's Gate. To these travelers, you gave blessings and protection. They, in turn, provided you with news, goods, and occasional training in their unique trades. Sorry, and occasionally train, training in their unique trades. A sheltered life can only protect for so long, however. This is the day that the perils came to you. The bell alerting the priests and acolytes of an approaching traveler rings loudly through the early morning fog. You make no quick, quick effort to see the newcomers, even despite such a rare event. That is, until you hear the cries for medical assistance. You jump with a start and gather your belongings, finding yourselves outside in no time. You part the small crowd, forming to see a lone man collapsed on the cold, rocky ground. He wasn't even able to reach the gates. His shirt is stuck to his chest with sticky, fresh blood. Uh, where was I? Numerous small lacerations have shredded his clothes with great effort. He points a trembling hand down the path he had fought upwards. Clearly, you can see where he came from, a trail of blood evident on the ground. Everyone gathered strains to hear his gra uh, raspy words. My family, by the ruins, please, they took them. The stress of those few words takes his remaining energy, and he falls unconscious, barely alive. The small crowd begins to speculate, murmuring about his fate. Which ruins did the man mean? There is an ancient tower nearby, and he could not have come far in this condition. But there is also... An abandoned dwarven mining town, just a hardy day's trek west. Those ruins lie on the road, but could he have traveled, uh, truly traveled that far? So I think what it's saying is, there's the ruins here. Over here is an abandoned dwarven mine, they're saying. And it's along a road, there is a road here, but the road doesn't connect all the way up. And then here's the tower I think they're talking about. Okay. Hmm. You volunteer to no one in particular to uncover the truth of what happened to this man and bring his family safely back. The fellow priests nod in approval, for you are the youngest and most capable among them. They quickly rush to find provisions for your journey. 
This allows you time to consider your options. You could immediately depart with the few items that your fellow acolytes can scrounge. Time clearly appears to be of the essence. On the other hand, such a daunting task requires the preparation of both body and mind. You can focus yourself enough to... <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> oh yeah, tea. <clears throat> sorry, throat tickles. Dry throat. <clears throat> Alright, sorry. Time clearly appears to be of the essence. On the other hand, such a daunting task requires the preparation of both body and mind. You can focus yourself enough to pull all of that training from passing strangers into practice, but it will take time. Place the group miniature on the Shrine of Seasons. So this is our party. Uh, we are on the Shrine of Seasons. Okay. All right, here's the option. If you depart immediately because time is your most precious resource, read entry one. If you take time to better prepare for your upcoming journey, read entry 16. So right here, it's trying to emphasize that the timer mechanic and how we only have so much time to find this dude's family uh, who are in trouble at some ruins. It's one of these two ruins, but which one? Which one? We'll have to investigate. <laughs> oh, you guys are funny. <laughs> Keith says, awesome. You can heal him, and if you fail... You can just eat him. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, you guys are funny. Okay, uh, let's go with, uh, so, uh, what is it? So you guys can make the choice. Uh, depart now, or Take time to prepare. Okay, I'm gonna put a poll in the chat for a couple minutes or a minute, uh, and you guys can decide for this decision. Do we do we rush? Do we just go with what we know and just get out of here quick, uh, and with whatever whatever they they've given us so far, or do we take time to prepare for our journey? So it's it's reminding us like time is is a precious resource. So, but we'll go with whatever you guys want. Whatever you guys want. And again, our win condition is return to the Shrine of Seasons with the knowledge of the man's missing family. If you do, read entry 33, okay? That's what we're trying to do. Oh, page 37. Uh, where are you? So Frank says, see intro... Page 37 about accessing a single locked ability and initial narration choice. Mm. Oh yeah, I should have read this stuff. I read this yesterday, but I didn't think it mattered. So the Shrine of Seasons. This shrine is your home. Heroes heal to full vitals here at no cost. Heroes may not purchase items here, and, sh and the shrine does not offer a blessing. Each hero may access a single locked ability during the narration choices. I totally missed that yesterday when I was playing too. I read this, but it didn't click, like I didn't do it, because I forgot. Uh, and then the runes, two rune hexes on hex tile F represent the two possible locations to complete your goal. Very important info, Rob, that I just skipped over. Very important info. Uh, okay, so we could unlock an ability, right? Hmm, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> the nice things I have the designer in the chat, right? They, they catch these things that I just like blaze over. <laughs> I love it. Okay, I'll end the poll and we can, you guys can decide where we're going with that. And then Explorer says, the narrative will tell you when you can unlock an ability. That section was just hinting that the narrative will allow you to do so. Oh, you don't get to do it right away. I see, I see. I see, I see. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Each hero may access a single lock locked ability during the initial narration choices. Okay, so it's just telling you it might happen. Which is... Okay, so I played correctly yesterday then. 
Because I don't think it happened. But. All right. <clears throat> so what do you guys pick? Time to prepare. Take time to prepare. 56%. Awesome. Thank you for voting, everybody. All right. So we are going to go to entry 16. All right. <clears throat> Reaching the Shrine of Seasons requires dedications uh, and skill for even a healthier traveler. Healthy traveler. I need to... You know what I need to do? Uh, so I ordered, like, a wooden uh, book holder thingy. It's a, you know, like, when you take notes in school, you kind of hold up a book. But I have this thing for, like, a laptop that I'm just going to use this. So I don't keep having to lean over... Um, and this will help me be able to read and kind of sit at an upright position. <laughs> so I could do it like this. And you guys can still, you could probably see better actually. Uh, I know it's kind of a little far, but you guys get the idea. I don't want you to read every entry anyway. All right. Reaching the Shrine of Seasons requires dedication and skill for even a healthy traveler, let alone someone as close to the edge of the abyss as the wounded man. He must have felt that he had no option left but to seek out your help. You, however, have options that this man did not. The chance to properly prepare yourselves. While your brothers and sisters ready your traveling bags and gear, you settle yourselves before the uh, mediation wall carved into the side of the mountain. Or sorry, the meditation wall. Meditation wall. Uh, carved into the side of the mountain. Your mind's clear and your thoughts focus on the single purpose of aiding this man. You contemplate as the sun rises higher in the sky. By the time your meditation is complete, you feel like you are more prepared for your venture. Each hero may access a locked ability and the group gains climbing gear. Okay, so climbing gear means we can go through mountain hexes uh, that normally you couldn't go through. If I remember correctly. So, uh, yeah. Right, climbing gear. I'm just going to write that in my backpack on this side, but I know I could write it in here or whatever, I think. Maybe not. Okay. Climbing gear. All right, we have it. Uh, all right, so let's access a locked ability. Oh, man. So accessing a locked ability... It's not going to be our Fey. <laughs> uh, this ability we already have, which I should keep out. Okay. Yeah, I'll keep this Morlock ability available. I need to see that one. I feel like we just take like our alpha onslaught. I don't know if I can put that. So alpha onslaught, this is our first mastery. You deal alpha onslaught rank, which it only starts at level one, two, three. Actually it starts at three, uh, but we have to spend two energy, two energy, to deal, basically it's to start, deal three on, deal three damage, plus Feral Blow rank, which Feral Blow is our attack, and it's starting out at uh, five, okay. Health damage, and we get to summon a number of creatures from your pack whose total level is equal to or lower than Alpha Onslaught rank. So I think we're gonna get one creature in our pack now at the start of the chapter. And starting next round and continuing until the end of combat, you choose what action each creature takes each round. Oh, that's neat. You don't have to roll, you just choose. If your creature is killed, you lose access to it until the end of the next game turn. At rank 8, if an opponent defends while well, you use this mastery, each creature's attack gains piercing. And at rank 12, yeah, I don't think we're going to get that high, but... But for the second ability, Savage Barrage, it deals health damage equal to our Feral Blow rank, which is our attack. This mastery may be used 
a number of times per round equal to one plus one third <laughs> Savage Barrage rank. So it scales. Each use costs one energy. Each Feral Blow gains plus one damage for each creature in your pack. So obviously the more creatures we capture, the more powerful it gets. And at rank nine, yada yada. We don't care about all that high rank stuff. I, I don't think we'll get there today, but... <laughs> uh, Bernardo, I see you saying in the chat. Uh, where is it? One second. So Bernardo saying in the chat brought up something interesting that I was thinking about as I was playing through this yesterday. Um, Bernardo's asking, saying, hey, explore it. Kudos to you guys. It must be really complex to map this stuff out and stitch it together to build the narrative. Thumbs up. Uh, and, and then explore it says, thanks, Bernardo. We'll be revealing our secrets on how we do this in our next update. The mind maps we've created to tie them all together is insane. So... Uh, I actually had a camera hidden and installed and I hacked Jonathan's computer so I could see him working on this game uh, and I actually have uh, a picture of him working on this uh, whole story uh, right here so here's what the, what it looks like as they were putting uh, all these chapters together uh, this is the process they use right here okay just so everyone knows I have some behind the scenes uh, I, I know it's bad what I did to get it but it just help you guys understand uh, how they do this Okay, just so you know. All right. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, okay, so I, I feel like I just want to do the Onslaught one. <laughs> I want to just do the Alpha Onslaught one. Uh, so we'll just open that one. We'll just open that one. Okay. So what we'll do, uh, I will just read off of here, but I will record this here. So we are at three to start based on our uh, aspect and our race. Okay. And again, we're locked out of this and we're locked out of this. I'll just put those there. It's a little weird what I'm doing here. Again, I'm, I'm not sure the best way to do this. I'm kind of experimenting with this little thing today for the first time. Oh yeah, we can max carry our gold, we can max carry, what is it, uh, 100 times our initial food rating, which is two, so we can carry 200 max gold. And then food, is it five times, so 10, I think. I think that's the, the what it is in the base game, right? So we can carry up to 10 food max. But I, I just noticed there's like max uh, areas there, which is kind of neat. Okay. So let's go, let's do the beast thing. So uh, at the beginning of each chapter, gain the lowest level creature that you don't already possess. So based on that, I think we capture this mangy wolves because the giant boar is level three. So I, I feel like we have this guy. But again, correct me if I'm wrong, Jonathan or Frank. <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's how the beast lord uh, works. Beginning of each chapter, gain the lowest level non swarm or horde creature that you don't already possess. And then, anytime we encounter a creature that we don't have in our pack, uh, we, we can ignore the combat and capture it. It's kind of neat, actually. That's right. Okay, perfect. Perfect. All right. It's been a while since I played the Beast Lord. <laughs> okay. I think we're good there. I think we're good. I think we're good. Let's do this. Okay. Actually, let me drop this down. There we go. All right. Uh, so we were here. Gain two times your food rating. Oh, we get more? Gain two times your food rating in both food and gold. Well, that's nice because I had no gold. 
Uh, so we're at one. So we get two times your food rating in both food and gold. So we're now up to five gold. And this marker is killing me. All right. Uh, and gold. Food. So food we can have up to 10. We're gaining four more, so we're maxed out on the food. That's good. Two times two is four. All right, if you have a food rating of zero, gain three gold only. Each hero gains two choices of one potion, one ration, or one luck stone. So potions heal your energy and health. I think it's, or it's energy or health. I forget which one. Let's, let's use our handy dandy reference. Uh, potion, heal three health and three energy. Okay, three health and three energy. Uh, we could take a ration. Uh, these are one time use. Each ration purchased equals two units of food and four food can be sold back for one gold. And then the other thing is a luck stone, which, oh man, I want to take one of those. So a luck stone, uh, use this stone to re-roll any one die outside of combat or to alter the result of a rolled circumstance by one. That's not the best part. The best part is to increase a restore amount by one. So when we're allowed to add time back to the deck, we can use one luck stone like per round, only one be used per day, uh, to increase our time in the game before we fail. So I kind of want a luck stone for that purpose because those seem really powerful. But then again, if we're not alive when we get to the end of the deck because we ran out of food, or we got killed because we had no health left, so maybe a potion would be a better choice, but we get two. Potion, ration, or luck stone. All right. What do we do here? I say you guys decide. And... Uh, what to take? Potion, ration, or luck stone. So whatever the top two voted things in the poll, uh, we'll take one of each of those. So what do you think, if you had to pick only one thing, would you take food? We, we have 10 food right now, and we eat two per round. So I feel like food, we might be okay. But uh, I mean, you never know in this game. We might just might lose food randomly. Somebody might eat our food. Uh, we might have to, our food rating could go up. Like, I, I never know. Like, Hexplore, it, it, it can get messy. It can get messy. Especially in this hole. Who knows what's going to happen, right? Uh, and then the gold, or, or sorry, the, the potion. Uh, potion's good. Healing health and energy in a combat. Especially when we're, like, in a combat where we can't handle too well. Or we're taking, like, piercing damage going through our defense and stuff. Um... That might help us get out of a jam. Or just energy so we can do our like uh, mastery. And then the luck stone. Man, being able to restore an extra time could be the difference between winning and losing, I think. Um, I feel like it's very powerful. So yeah, you guys vote and then I'll go with whichever one. Yes, we're playing the we're playing the pre prequel Pontus. This is like the prequel to the actual chapters in the campaign. There's an optional prequel to like kind of learn the system uh, that we're playing with today. So spoiler warning, of course, if you want to go in completely blind. Hey, Meeple Monkey, how's it going? <laughs> oh yeah, I can just eat people too. I'm a Murloc, right? More or Morlock, sorry, Morlock. Once per game turn after defeating an opponent, you may spend one health and one energy to consume the remains and heal health and energy equal to twice your opponent's level. But it's only after combat. It doesn't help me in the combat. Unless I'm fighting multiple opponents. Unless I'm fighting multiple opponents in the same combat. Hmm. Ah, hmm. I see. And we might, or, or, actually, per game turn, we might get into a uh, branching path of the chapter where we might do multiple fights. So in the same game turn, we might come into instances, I don't know if this will happen for sure, but we might come into a situation where we have to fight one thing, then after that fight we go through some more story choice, and then we're presented with another fight, 
before even getting through a full day. So actually this eating people could have help us on those kind of situations. I, I again, I don't know if they'll happen today, but it's a possibility. It's a possibility. All right. Uh, so yeah, but uh, didn't you max out your food allotment carrying capacity? Uh, we did, we did max it out. But again, rations you can just carry in your backpack, right? And, and they help you kind of like hold extra food, no? Like I thought you can carry rations in your backpack and then like kind of spend them to add to your food rating uh, or your food uh, as, as you need. That's what I thought. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just misremembering. But maybe when you purchase, Frank would know. So Frank, when I purchase rations, I have to put it in my food rate, in my food amount right away. I always thought you could like carry them in your backpack and, and they're not like, you know, it's not food yet, but that, that would be kind of weird, right? Yeah, never mind. I'm crazy. Oh, I am right. Okay. Ice. Ice. <laughs> no worries, Frank. Understood. <laughs> I don't know how you keep all this stuff straight. It's all good. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah. Let's see what you guys wanted. I'll close the poll and we'll pick one of each of the top two things. So I can blame you guys again if something bad happens. So I definitely sold you guys on the Lux Stones. Lux Stone number one, sixty percent. Uh, so we got one Lux Stone and Potion twenty-eight percent. Okay, one Potion. I like it. Yeah, we're good for food. I think right now. So like a ration's not a big deal, but. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Um, okay, cool. And you could, we could choose the same option twice, but I'm, I'm purposely not, just to have variety. But yeah, I probably would just buy two Lux Stones. <clears throat> but a potion's good, a potion's good. Each hero gains one vital or skill gear upgrade. One vital or skill upgrade. So our vitals, our health, and our energy, we could gain one in that, but I think we're high there. I feel like we need to get our skills up, right? Uh, our uh, skills of uh, navigate, explore, and survival. I definitely want survival. Yes. Uh, so this is a gain. So I don't think I write in the, the number because I didn't purchase it, right? So I write it in here, but I don't think I mark it off because I didn't buy it, right? I always get confused with that in these games. Each hero gain because I'm gaining it, right? I don't mark it off. I, I don't know. You guys can correct me in the chat. Do I, do I mark this off because I gained a gear upgrade or do I leave that open? I feel like I leave it open, but I could be wrong. Um... <laughs> Because <laughs> funny. Oh man. <laughs> You're funny, Matt. All right. Uh, so now it says, content that you have all that you need, you begin to head for the gates. But a thought makes you pause. You were wondering if it may be worthwhile to head to the infirmary to check on the wounded traveler. You already decided that time is essential. So it may be prudent to continue your quest as swiftly as possible. Still, you may be able to discover something of use on the man. Or perhaps he has regained consciousness enough to offer more information as to where his missing family is. Uh, no, no, we're taking this nice and slow, Kanji. There's, it's no winning yet. And we're all playing together this one. Everyone's helping with every choice. This is going to take it, make it last forever, though. That's the only problem. But uh, my next stream isn't for another three and a half hours, so we got time. <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, what to do? So it's now presented us with another choice. Uh, so we could save time by leaving or go visit the, the man. Maybe he's agreeing consciousness. Maybe he can give us some extra info or something. So leave now. Or visit Oh, but leave now and save time because it's like emphasizing 
Time is important. But again, I'm down with whatever. Whatever you guys want to want to see, we'll do it. And I won't tell you how I chose yesterday, but I think I chose the way that I thought chat might not vote, just so I could see some different stuff. And I can kind of give you my thoughts later if we have time on on how how the two little different playthroughs were. Brian says three and a half hours to waste. Hey, this is not a waste, but challenge accepted. Yes. We are waiting for him to expire, says Brian. <laughs> All right, I'll close that one quicker. Let's see, ending the poll. Thanks everyone that voted. I'm gonna try to do the polls a little quicker, so. All right. So we're going with visit the man, 57%. So we try to gather more information from the wounded man. We're going to 63. It certainly wouldn't hurt to at least check up on the man to see how he's doing. If you're lucky, he may be able to provide you with more information about where he and his family were when his attack occurred, or at least some added context. When you arrive at the infirmary, infirmary, infirmary you discover that any luck in the area must have all been used by this man just to keep him breathing. He remains alive, but only barely so. An empty vial of a healing potion lies on the bedstand next to him. His bloodied and torn clothing clothes form a heap at the foot of his bed. The attending priestess, Mariah, or Mira, Myra, Myra, indicates that she has been able to dress the man's wounds and he will survive, but for now, he simply needs rest. She also suggests that the injuries most likely came from several attacks by a blade or a knife. She surmises that the man must have been accosted by bandits waiting on the road by the old mining town to the west. So that, okay, okay. So that I think is uh, this rune, because this was like the abandoned dwarf mine or whatever. And that's the west rune, not the eastern rune. So I think this has given us a hint. His clothes bespeak those of a commoner. Such a brazen attack by the bandit prince's men is certainly not of heard of. Not unheard of. You ask the priestess if the man had any items on him and she gestures towards a po the pile of bloody clothes. Roll explore twice. If any hero exceeds either, re uh, either roll, read entry two, otherwise continue reading. Roll explore twice, which is yellow. And uh, our explore is on a three. So if we roll a three or less, we succeed. We get to roll twice. A nine, that's uh, not, not a success. <laughs> a 10, that's a critical fail, so uh, no. All right, continue reading. Finding nothing of value, decide it's best to get moving. With your first steps outside the shrine's gate, you are confident that you will find justice for this man. You hope to find more. His family is still out there. Your adventure to save the man's family begins. So we are two hours into the stream and we're just getting started. All right. <laughs> if you have single-minded, your time... Okay, we do not have single-minded, which is a, a campaign status. And again, the campaign statuses are all on here. So we do not have any yet. Okay, no single-minded. Uh... Your timer deck begins with 16 cards plus the number of heroes. Otherwise, your timer deck begins with 14 cards plus the number of heroes. So 15 cards is in our timer deck. So because you guys wanted to dilly-dally uh, and not go out on our adventure fast enough, yeah, we got some cool stuff, food and gold and all this stuff, but come on, now we're like shorter on time. Like, what did you guys do? All right, so 15 cards in the timer deck. This is from these upgrade cards. You guys have seen these before in the game. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. They are shuffled up again. If we get are given a chance to draw power up cards, we draw them from this deck. Unless it's from defeating a boss, we draw them from the restore deck. Okay, the restore deck. I'm just going to set off to the side. If we get to restore, we're going to add cards to the top of this timer deck. Okay. I'm just gonna put this up here. This is our time deck, okay? When that runs out, it's done, okay? 
And these are our circumstances we gathered earlier um, to draw from it when, when it tells us to. Okay, so now is our first chance for a heroic moment. Okay, uh, if we have the healer type, no. If we're a guardian or a nomad role, no. I don't think so, no. Angelborn or Illumon, oh, Illumon, you guys didn't choose that one. So we're, we're Morlock and Fae, right? Or an elemental aspect. No, our aspect is Fae. So I don't think we have any of those. So here's a whole heroic moment. And you could gain, it looks like you could gain a, a campaign status. So this is just our first chance to have a heroic moment. And we failed. You guys. I could blame you this time. All right. And it says at the bottom, uh, this event is now complete. So now you know you're done in here, and we're good to start. So what I'm going to do is go back to, uh, I need to put a, yeah, I got a little, got my little ribbon in here. Uh, so we're going to go back to uh, the flow of the turn. I have another ribbon here, so we can always like look at this. So we're going to start with sunrise. It's a new day. So what we're going to do on our battle mat, uh, we're going to track our days on here. So we're going to cross off the first number it says. So zero so we're on day one is the first number here so day one okay we're gonna keep track of it on there but we also keep track of it in the cards and you'll see how that's done too as a backup because you know sometimes we forget to write, write the number oh uh, we also could track it on our sheet here um maybe i do that actually yeah let's do that So it's technically day one, but we don't add a card in there to show the day has passed till the villain phase, which is a little, I guess it should line up, right? Okay. Uh, all right. Movement phase. We decide how we move. Four types of movement. And each determines how many cards you advance and modifiers you gain and the skills roll during the skill phase. Any increases to movement, like re reliable mounts, uh, pleasant weather, or blessings, do not account for advancing the timer deck for total hexes moved. So if you have the horses that give you the extra movement, you're not punished by having to draw extra time cards because I guess you'd be thematically too, you'd, you'd be making better time. So uh, getting that extra movement, so it makes sense. All right, so based on where we are, we're here. We now know after talking to the man, we wanna get here. We technically could stop off here on the way uh, again, so our, our movement options, we could camp, which is not moving at all. I, I think we want to get moving, and that we could do that to heal and stuff. We can move cautiously, which is one hex, or up to three hexes along a river or road. And if I'm looking at the map here, there is a river, but it heads up uh, northeast. Uh, sorry, it heads up northeast, goes like this direction, uh, and we want to go this way, so that doesn't help. A road starts on this hex and goes here. So, like, we kind of want to make our way to this area. The only problem is, uh, I don't know what this whole yellow border is about, really. It just says it's the southern steps or whatever. So, like, who knows what could happen in here. Might be bad to go there, might be good. Not sure. This is the beauty of this game. You just have fun exploring the world. Okay, and then you learn things as you play, and then try to be careful, and, you, and especially in this campaign, pay attention to the narrative. Uh, it, it'll give you tips about certain things, right? Okay, um, so I say, like, we're just going to go to the west. Uh, so let's try to make it to this road, and normal movement is four hexes. So one, two, three, four. I think we just try that, right? Let's just go four. Oh yeah, the chapter triggers, thank you. There is no, uh, at sunrise, do we have true heroes? What do we have? We didn't get anything yet, right? Did I mark that we didn't get anything? Yeah, we didn't get anything yet, right? Yeah, we don't have true heroes, we don't have heavy burden, and that's what it's asking about here. We didn't get single-minded, but it was mentioned. I don't think we got any statuses yet. But maybe I missed one. I don't think I did. Oh, there is a trigger that occurs in the southern steps. 
Oh, right here. Explore group success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, Jonathan. If at least half the group succeeds and explores skill roll while they are in the southern steps, play a circumstance, then read 26. Oh. Oh. I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> I honestly have no idea. I didn't, this never happened yesterday to me. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh man, okay, uh, let's just try for fun, I guess. So we're gonna go, uh, I mean, we might wander out if we, if we don't do the movement. So we're gonna move from here and kind of go through there to this spot to get on this road. But again, if we're moving normal, we could fail our, uh, what is it, our navigate and then have to wander, which we may wander like in this direction. So we'll wander like in a random direction, uh, which is always fun. Always fun. All right. So let's do our normal movement. So we'll move up to four hexes. So we're choosing the normal move option. Uh, and then we're going to go one, two, three, four. Okay. We didn't travel the whole time on a road. So we couldn't do some like moving cautiously or anything, only moving three hexes. So I just went all out, move normal, might as well. Um, and now I advanced the timer deck. Uh, one card for every two hexes, uh, rounded up. So we're going to just advance two timer cards. Oh man, I wish, I wish. Okay. All right. So those are just in a discard pile. We don't care about what's on them. Uh, sort of. Yeah, they're just gone. All right. I care inside. Uh, okay. The group gains no bonuses or penalties, and then we roll our skill dice normally. So now we're going to roll our navigate, our explore, and our, uh, survival dice against our stats. Okay, against our stats. Okay, uh, survival missed. So we have to eat two food. Okay. Uh, let's do this. Yeah, oh yeah, we got a ribbon in there. Uh, where was I? So we got to eat two food. Okay, um, and then... Uh, our explore we failed so we get nothing but dirt and we definitely are wandering we got a 10 on the navigate anything above a 3 we're wandering so uh, but but I feel like what did we try to what do we need to succeed on let's just double check our triggers but I, I think we wander first though I think we wander first uh, where's my ribbon Navigate or explore. So the green or the yellow. I didn't succeed on either. Those are critical successes. I didn't get criticals. Explore group success. So let's let's wander first. Because we definitely failed and we move normal. So we can wander. Uh, three. So three is to the south. So we're going to wander one to the south. Okay. And I think that's, is that still in the steps? Yes, we're still in the southern steps. Uh, but our explorer did not succeed, so we definitely don't do that trigger. Because we need, we need to get a success on the yellow, and we didn't. We definitely were higher than the three, right? Okay. Uh, then, then we're done with the skill phase, I think. I think I got all that stuff. Again, a little rusty with this, but... Uh, after resolving skill rolls, so now... Uh, we're not on an event space because we haven't made it to the ruin or any of that stuff, any of the ruins yet or anything. So we're just going to roll uh, against the circumstance table to do a circumstance. So there's an anywhere else table. There's an underground table you roll against if you're underground. And then there's a hex table that you will roll against if you get a hex on... Uh, on either of these two tables, you get some like cool stuff happening. So let's do a circumstance. And because we move normal, we have to take the circumstance. We don't have the option to ignore it if we can't or move cautiously. Five. Is that good? Hope it's good. Uh, so a five is restore one. Oh. Let's use our luck stone, right? So we're going to use our luck stone. On the restore. 
Uh, and then we get to add, so we get to restore one. And we'll use the Lux Stone to add another one. Because I will forget about that Lux Stone later. I don't care about using it for rerolls. I want to advance our, uh, our restore. And I don't know how many options we'll get to do restores, right? So let's, look, we got lucky here. Uh, and then heal two health and two energy. But we are full, which I should write in here. Okay. You've discovered an easy path through the normally rough terrain. You've, your feet are grateful. <laughs> okay, so that's our circumstance. Uh, and no triggers on that one. No triggers, because we weren't at the Eastern Ruins, and we weren't at the Western Ruins. Now the Villain Phase, it says, at the beginning of the first Villain Phase, which is now, we're going to read Entry 70. Uh, the first day away from the shrine has been more exhausting than you had thought, and you welcome the coming night. Camp has been made for the evening, and you ready yourselves to continue your quest in the morning. <laughs> your slumber is jostled by the sound of a soft footsteps and a deep guttural growling. In the dying light of your quaint campfire, you spy three wolves sniffing about the camp. Apparently, you didn't secure the food supplies appropriately, and the wolves have batted them to the ground. The wolves appear to be in quite an emaciated uh, state. Likely, they would just take some of your food and leave without bothering you further. They are clearly starving and in need of sustenance. Fighting them is also certainly an option, but these animals look like they are so starved that you have no idea if they would battle for the food or simply flee. So, oh, new subscriber. Jimmy, thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome, welcome. Uh, so we have our heroic moment. Beastmaster slash Beast Lord. That's us. That's us. Also, there's utility. I think we get to do both, but let's do the first one first and see what happens. Uh, so Beastmaster Heroic. If you attempt to soothe the wolves, read 62. I'm just going to do it. I've not seen more than one of these. I want to see another one. Um, yeah, let's do this. You know these creatures aren't monsters, although any sufficiently starving creature can become one. It is possible that you can use your connection to them to soothe the beasts into submission and encourage them to leave your supplies alone. It is not a guarantee that they will respond positive positively to you, however. One hero who earns this moment must roll the hex die. Okay. Five. I can't even hit the dice straight. Five. Okay. Uh, if you have accessed a mastery, a success is equal to or lower than your mastery rank, which is three. Uh, so it's a fail. If you succeed, read 31. Otherwise, the wolves do not respond to your efforts. Return to 70 and make a separate choice. <laughs> I suck at rolling. I suck at rolling. Time for me to hex it and I'll see you later, Brian. Thank you for hanging out. <laughs> all right. Uh, back to 70. And let's see here. We're going to go down. Pixie? No, we don't have Pixie, right? It's Faye. Uh, elemental. Okay, Utility. Let's do this one. If you already prepared your camp for just such an occasion, read 56. All right, let's try that, because we are Utility type. We're Utility and Striker, I think, right? Is the brown? Brown's Utility. Just want to double check. Yes, brown is Utility. All right, uh, 56. The safety of your friends and your camp is paramount. That is why you have used your mechanical expertise and skills to prepare for just such an occasion as nosy wolves. You motion for your companions to remain silent and allow the wolves to move in closer. Suddenly, there is a snap and a howl as one of the wolves stepped into a hidden snare. The others scatter into the night, terrified, unable to grab even a morsel of your food. With the danger gone, you reset your traps. The food supplies are resecured, tightly this time, and you return to sleep, confident, that this has deterred any other woodland creatures from interfering with your camp. The event is now complete. 
So that actually went okay. That actually went okay. Uh, cool. So at the end of the villain phase, uh, we now advance the time, but instead we advance it with a card sideways. And that is to help us track how many days have passed if we ever like lose track or forget to write it down or whatever. Okay? Uh, so it's just another way to track it. But it also advances the timer, right? Okay, so... Um, day two. Okay. Day two. So we're not true heroes, we're not heavy burden. Uh, we're not on the road. I forget the rules on the roads. I remember there was discussion about this before. I'm not on a road to start, but I think, I think if I move onto a road and continue following the road, I think that's okay. I don't think you need to start on a road to, to move cautiously, but I could be wrong. I don't know if Frank or, or Jonathan can answer in the chat. But I'm debating just moving one, two, oh, I can, it wouldn't be cautiously anyway, because I can only move three spaces on the road, but I might do that anyway, and just get beside the runes, or I could just move three spaces here, and, and just, but I might wander, and I don't, I don't really want to wander. You can use cautious if your first movement is onto a road. I thought so, Frank. I just couldn't remember. It's been a while, but I remember learning that. And thinking that's what it was. Okay, so let's try moving cautiously this time. Uh, which is move one hex or up to three hexes along a river or road. So we're gonna move uh, one, two, three. We're just gonna go beside the ruin, okay? Okay, and then uh, we advance. Uh, we'll still advance two, because it's, it's one per two hexes. Oh man, that's a good one. Uh, round it up. So we still advance the same time. But the cool part is, uh, we won't wander, and if we have a circumstance, we may choose to avoid it. So we're only going to roll the yellow and the blue die, and see if we find gold or eat food. So <laughs> critical fail on the blue die, and uh, we got a two, so we do find some gold. Yeah, let's do this. So we found some gold. Worth of treasure. And we have to eat. So we consume two food. So we have six gold and six food. Cool beans. If your character wasn't on that space. Oh, I was on this space, right? Sorry, I got messed up. Thank you. I should be in the runes, right? Because I was here? I was here, right? Thank you, Eileen. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think I was here. I, I think I moved it by accident. One, two, three, right? Perfect. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for catching that. Okay. Um, so let's check our triggers. If any hero critically succeeds their navigate or explore role, uh, that's not a critical. We got a 2 and a 10. No. Nope. And we're no longer in the um, southern steps. So I think we missed those triggers. Uh, we're, not, we're good on those. But now, uh, for the circumstance, we're on the western ruins. If you're here in the event phase, play a circumstance. And I think we can choose to ignore it because we move cautiously, right? So we're going to roll against the table here. Two. So it's a giant boar. Um, yeah, it's a giant boar. You notice too late that you've stumbled upon the den of a giant boar who suddenly emerges with a savage squeal. So what I could do, because I believe that's a creature, I can just capture it. And we avoid the combat. So I don't have to avoid the circumstance if I don't want to. Um, 
but yeah, I think I think it'll just capture him so I have some more stuff to control, right? Or summon, I should say. Let me just double check. Additionally, anytime the group encounters a creature that is not in your pack, you may choose to skip combat with one instance of the creature and add it to your pack. <laughs> Matt says, a giant boar? That's a little on the nose, isn't it? <laughs> I know, I avoided the combat, I'm sorry. That's, that's kind of boring. But that's how I, I gotta use my abilities where I can. It doesn't always work out for you. All right. Uh, so now we did the circumstance. We're gonna read entry 61. <clears throat> hey, oh, let's just drink a tea first. <clears throat> All right. A cracked stone road. A cracked stone road winds its way west towards the looming mountain. In the shadow of the peak is a small collection of broken down homes, remnants of the dwarven community that once excavated this mine. The roofs have long since fallen into their frames and all manner of vines and plant life grows about their bones. You have no idea why the mine was abandoned. It has been this way for a, as long as anyone in the sh uh, shrine can remember. Every so often, you heard stories from passing travelers who have attempted to delve into the deserted darkness, hoping to find some forgotten treasure. The stories all ended the same, fruitless, unless you like old dwarven pickaxes. If you have single-minded, which we don't, read 60, otherwise read 64. Your determination to assist the wounded man and his family has brought you to these ruins in great haste. You're still not even entirely certain that this is the right place. Why would a family be traveling slow, so close to some long abandoned mine? Perhaps like so many others, they wanted to see for themselves if they could scare up a windfall to secure their future. Your thoughts are cut short. Without warning, an arrow zips through the air, clattering against the stone at your feet. The rotten buildings around you erupt in a cacophony of crackling as goblins swarm towards you, weapons barred. So there's a plus symbol here, which means we have to advance uh, one time. And then we're gonna face the Tenacious Goblin Looters, which is an encounter, uh, a campaign encounter uh, enemy. If you vanquish them, continue reading. So Tenacious, what is Tenacious? The heroes may not flee from a Tenacious opponent. Okay, okay, uh, so let's find them. Uh, they are in here somewhere. All right, what is it? We are on 64. I'm just gonna put this in here. Actually, I should probably write it down because I will forget. I'll just put it here. We're in entry 64, okay? If we need, we need to go back some flipping pages. And it is Goblin Looters. Oh, this is our, our swarm. We gotta do a swarm enemy, okay, okay. So a swarm enemy, they have like this outlast ability. They still roll these abilities, but we can't, they don't have no health or energy. Uh, so they work differently, which we'll find the rules for those. Swarms and hordes are a new subtype of opponent introduced in volume three, the Sands of Shirax. Refer to this section when you face one. Swarms and hordes do not have health or energy. Therefore, the group cannot inflict health or energy damage to them. Instead, they have a vital called outlast. Outlast is the length of time it takes the heroes to gain the upper hand. Outlast is equal to the number shown in the outlast value, plus one per hero. Uh, oh yeah, so it won't be on here. We gotta like just write it. Which is fine. I'll just write it on this side. Uh, so it is four per, plus one per hero, so five outlast. Oh, you guys can't see that, but just writing it here. Five outlast, okay? <clears throat> um, okay, the heroes succeed against an opponent with outlast when their outlast value is reduced to zero. Like other opponents, 
Uh, the group rolls the hex action die to determine the opponent's action each round. Each combat action is tied to one stat. Opponents with Outlast have three stats shown under the Outlast value. Oh yes, I remember this now. <clears throat> so you choose a stat to roll against. If, if you're good at it, you then can like avoid, if they get a certain roll here, you like avoid the damage. Now I remember. During the declaration phase, heroes must choose one of the available stats to roll a stat test against in order to reduce the Outlast value. Record Outlast reductions on the battle mat. Outlast is only reduced during the resolution phase and automatically reduces itself by one at the end of each round of combat. Stat test and stat immunity. Each round of combat, each hero may choose to roll one stat that matches one of their three stat tests available shown under the Outlast value. Roll this stat. Rolling the stat test becomes a hero's only action for the round. If the stat test is successful, reduce the Outlast based on the type of success shown below. So it's minus one Outlast. If it's critical, it's minus two. Additionally, each hero succeeds at a stat test that matches the opponent's action is immune to that action this round. So with this guy, if I choose like the defense to roll against my defense stat, and I succeed and he gets one of these two options, uh, we're immune to it. Which is cool. Uh, using other abilities, heroes may choose to use their defend or masteries instead of rolling the stat test. The opponent cannot suffer health or energy damage, but all other effects may still apply, such as defending damage, healing or raising vitals, decreasing the damage your opponent deals, etc. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see here. So he's a monstrous humanoid horde. So we, we, our favorite opponent is humanoid, not monstrous humanoid. So I don't, I don't think we have a uh, favorite opponent against them. Right? Is humanoid? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we're fighting against these goblin looters that are in, in the book. And we could get a gold and a food from defeating them. All right, so I guess we're just going to choose and... Uh, we are, I'm playing a single player, the true solo uh, variant that's in the game. So uh, playing one hero, you're allowed to spend one energy per round to defend at half your defense rank and still use an item if you want. Um, but I think I'm okay. My defense is, it will only be for one because it's rounded down, half rounded down. And they hit for... One piercing health or two piercing energy. So, yeah, they pierce anyway. So, like, I don't care about defending then because that goes right through the defense. And those who fail on the third one, if they get their five or hex, they suffer one health and energy damage and become wounded. If any hero suffers damage from this attack, oh, I might want to defend then. Yeah, I might want to defend because if I don't suffer damage from this last one, uh, it will increase their outlast by one if they roll five or six. Okay, so we gotta be smart. So, uh, I feel like we're gonna roll a test again. Oh yeah, but if we roll against defense, it's a three. That's not really good. I think we just roll against our attack of five. So we're immune to the piercing. But we could roll against our health, which is 15. But then that doesn't make us immune to anything here. And then because this is 15, I feel like we get a critical success from like 1 through 4 or something, I believe. Right? Mm -mm. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, uh, so let's attack or uh, test. So we'll just roll a d10, and we're gonna test against. Oh man, you would also critically see a roll of five or left if you choose health or less. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, I thought it was four or less. Yeah, because it's like once you start eleven, eleven or higher, right? Or is it yeah, eleven or higher? Then you succeed on. Or no, it's 12, 13, 14, yeah. Five or higher? Okay, let's, yeah, let's just do the health one. Uh, and we'll just, unfortunately, like, we could raise. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use an energy, and I'm going to defend. Uh, so I'm going to spend an energy to defend for one. And that's just in case they get their last one. I want to try to block 
Uh, oh no, it wouldn't block because it's one health and one energy. And if I only defend for one, one of those things will get through. So yeah, let's, let's not do that. Who cares? I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure I can't block both because I would only be defending for um, one. Okay, so let's roll against 15. Uh, two. So we critically succeed, so we reduce his outlast by two. Um, but we're not immune to any of his abilities, or their abilities, I guess. And they rolled a three, which is those who fail suffer two piercing energy damage, but we don't fail, so we're good, right? Oh yeah, we won't fail at any of this stuff either. Yeah. So I feel like they don't do this stuff. Yeah, those who fail suffer two piercing energy damage, but we didn't fail. All right. Uh, so this guy's down to three outlast. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I feel like we're fine. This we can't use. Okay. Uh, let's just do it again. So we'll test against health. Yeah, our health is like ridiculously high. This is like kind of kind of sneaky that they have health as an option here because we can take advantage. Uh, a six is just a regular success. And then let's see what they do. A two. Two is those who fail suffer one piercing health damage. Oh, I did fail it because I rolled health. Okay, I get it, I get it. So it's it's against this stat. I get it. So I fail, so I'm taking all this stuff no matter what. I get it, okay. All right, all right. So uh, previously, I would have two piercing energy damage. So I'm down to nine. So that's from the last round. This one, they rolled a two, which um, one piercing health. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Yeah, that's why I was confused. It's like, yeah, it's against this specific stat, sorry. So I chose health, which is kind of greedy, but then it's not going to stop any of these things from hitting me. Because, yeah, then I wouldn't get the immunity unless I passed on those ones. I see. I get it, I get it, I get it. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, otherwise, that's like way too easy, right? <clears throat> Alright. Uh, so this guy's down to two. So, uh, let's do it against health again. Five. So that's minus two, but we gotta do their roll. A four. So two piercing energy damage. And they're done. Reduce their out. Oh, yeah, and reduce their outlast by one each round. I totally forgot that part. Yes, so they're done. They're done anyway, right? Uh, yeah, because it would have been one, two. Oh, that last round wouldn't have happened, actually, right? Because at the end of the second round. Yeah, because I had them at two at the start of that round, but it, it should have been minus one each round, right? So I think this should be at nine. Yep. Yeah, I forgot the end of the round one. Thank you, Jonathan, thank you. Yeah, it's been a while since the, the Swarm of Horde stuff. Even though I just read it, it's not, not sticking. Um, but yeah, it's been a while. Okay, cool. So we get one gold and one food. Right. One gold and one food. And we're going to go back to 64. Oh, yeah. Uh... What was their level? Because I can eat them, right? Let's eat them. They're level one, so my ability is once per game turn after defeating an opponent, you may spend one health and one energy to consume their remains to heal health and energy equal to twice your opponent's level. So I spend one to heal two? I mean, that's okay, I guess. <laughs> it's all good. 
All right. Sure. Yum, 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 yum. I ate the whole horde. It was great. Yum, 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 yum. All right. If you vanquish them, continue reading. You dust the brush from your clothes and clean the blood from your weapons after a, the surprising fray. You know that goblins are tribal, territorial folk, but you had no idea that there were any goblin tribes this close to you in the valley. Besides, why would they have set an ambush for you? Were they simply a troop, a trope of bandits? Your eyes immediately drift to the mine. Its dark entrance yawns ominously. There are no further signs of the wounded man's family out there, at least not directly. You could search the area for more information, but that will take precious time. If we are a goblin or a goblinoid, we're not. Heroic moment. Or we have cartographer, hunter, nomad, vagabond. Nope, no vagabond. Almost though. We almost got it today. Uh, dragon kin. Lizard man. Oh, we had lizard man earlier, but we didn't end up getting it. Bestial. Bestial. No. Right. Draconic or entomorph. Nope. If you have forewarned. I don't think we got that, right? Do we, I feel like we forgot to write down a, a campaign stat. Maybe we didn't. Maybe we didn't. Right, why not? No. I'm like getting confused again. <laughs> Roasted gob. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't think we have that. I don't think we have that. But, uh... Could be wrong. All right. If you brave the darkness and enter the cave entrance, read 25. Or we could take some extra time, advance one time. If you take some time to search the area for further clues, read 28. No, we don't have it. Okay, thank you, Frank. Yeah, I just can't remember. Okay, so I'm going to do a poll for this. And I'm going to take a quick break while you guys vote. Um, so we could save some time. Uh, just enter the darkness of the mines, I guess. Uh, yeah, enter the cave's entrance or spend time examining the area. All right, I'm going to put a poll in the live chat. You guys can decide. I'm just going to take a quick break. I'll be right back.
All right, we're back. Okay. All right, let's close the poll. Thank you again, everyone, for voting. Much appreciated. Bob says, spending time examining the area sounds like uh, the loot direction. <laughs> Doc uh, says, cast magic missile at the darkness. Uh, that, I don't think that was an option, uh, but maybe, maybe it'll show up. Red Amis says, I'm at work, gonna have to watch later. You're lucky you got the book earlier. I have to wait for mine. Ah, uh, yeah, that's, thank you again to Explore It, Jonathan, for, for offering the book to send over. I could, how could I say no uh, when you showed me this, this beautiful book? which I did want and I was going to play later in the year. But yes, I got it early so I can show you guys because remember the pledge manager closes March 31st. So hopefully seeing this today can help you either decide if it's for you or it's not um, either way. So it's cool to see it like in action. Like it's crazy that I'm holding this thing. I remember seeing when it was just PDFs like uh, in like campaign updates. I feel like from uh, volume three or something they were talking about this already. And I was like excited because I love campaign games. You guys know I love playing through campaign games on the channel. So Explorer being one of my favorite games to actually play it campaign style was like a big deal to hear they were doing that. So now I have it. Yes, I am. I know I'm very lucky. I know I'm very lucky. But uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I sorry if I make you jelly. Sorry for making you jelly. But don't worry, I'm not going to play through any more of it. I'm going to put this away until after everyone has it who who's ordered it uh on their their uh game found crowdfunding campaign so that way uh people have a chance to play it and then you guys can join along when we play through chapter one through four later in the year that's the plan okay so don't worry i'm not gonna like spoil it all before that so so no no chance of that okay uh all right so we are going to enter the darkness you guys are crazy okay no more dilly dallying around okay uh so we're gonna read entry 25 25, 25. You consider your options and realize that if the wounded man's family is anywhere, then they are most likely somewhere within the depths of this cave and, it's, and time is still wasting. You spend no more of it wondering. You quickly light a torch, hoping its light will last as long as you need it. You are now underground. We are underground. So we follow different movement rules. Um, when you're underground, which is way back here, I feel like it's here. Yeah. Underground movement. We'll need to check that out when we go to move. Uh, but yeah, the light of the sun fades away behind you. The bird song fades as well. The only source of visibility now is the flicker of the torch dancing against the rough stone walls as the darkness continues to twist ahead. You are now not sure what to expect in here, but you are cautious. Each hero chooses to roll either survival or explore. Uh, hmm. I think I'll choose explore. Oh, but it says, check the following heroic moments before continuing. Oh, okay, okay. Are we a trap specialist? No. Scoundrel? No. Dwarf, gray dwarf, underfoot? No. Dwarf, gray dwarf, stonemar, ogrekin, underfoot? No, I don't think any of these. All right. So we're just going to roll uh, explore. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> well, okay. I changed my mind. I'm not going to play just for the sequel because I cannot stand my stats to be this low. I, I'm going to play the whole campaign today just so I can get my stats up to like the levels I love. Being at like eights and nines and stuff. This is killing me. Uh, uh, playing so much Explore It. Normally this is killing me right now. But it, we're, we're just, we're prequel times. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to play the whole thing. But uh, not right now. But yeah, it's killing me that like I'm looking at testing against twos and threes. Like I always try to get those stats up as much as possible. <laughs> like as fast as possible and it's killing me we can't do it um so now if at least half the group succeeds on their chosen stat this is the other disadvantage of playing true solo uh i think yeah you always roll one right so it's like half rounded down so 
we we have to or no it's half like we always have to have one success to pass on these right but if we had two people playing and it's just like half the group then like we're, we have two chances to succeed so that's why i like playing this game with mel a lot <laughs> uh all right so we read uh 44 because we failed Mikael, I'm not sure. Uh, Mikael, maybe uh, Jonathan can answer. <laughs> nice, Bob. Nice. Uh, all right. Let's go to... Uh, where were we going? 44, right? I'm now getting lost. Round 25. Cool part is you can like trace back if you're ever like not sure. Uh, there's like little numbers, you can't really see them. Um, but there's little numbers to track back like where you came from, uh, where it could have came from, which is neat. So if we go to 44, because we failed, and 44 tells me I came from 25. So I had to use that yesterday, I got lost. Like I forgot how I got in the battle and I was like trying to figure out where I came from and I had to like retrace my steps. But that's that's a clever little thing that you don't see in a lot of these um, a lot of these story books that are like this, like uh, with the branching paths and stuff. I like that a lot. That's like uh, that's a uh, nice to have right there. In a one hero game, you'll need to make the roll. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought that too. Okay, perfect. Uh, in the span of a few minutes, you realize that uh, not only are these dwarven mines not abandoned, but whoever has taken up residence here really does not want any visitors. Various crude traps have been set into the stone walls and ground. A pitfall, a pile of rocks set to collapse on top of you. Even a rusty blade set to swing down the middle of the passageway. So anyone who's a Dark Souls fan, we are officially in Sen's Fortress now. Uh, despite the crude nature of the traps, you have been unfortunate to fall victim to some of them. Though thankfully, no one suffered any life-threatening injuries. Each hero rolls the hex die and suffers non-lethal health and energy damage equal to the result. Oh, so non-lethal just means we can't go below one health or energy from this, no matter how hard it hits us. But we have like pretty good stats. So it's definitely not gonna kill us. But if we were down to like four left and we rolled like a five on here, normally that would kill you, but non-lethal just means it can only bring you down as low as one. Five, of course. Jeez Louise. Jeez Louise. Well, that hurt. Uh, now we have to play a circumstance. So we're underground, which is a different table. Let me just grab, uh, where's our, I'm gonna grab the other ribbon. I don't need it at the back anymore. Okay, so we're gonna play a circumstance. So I need to just jump back to the table here. Uh, yeah, underground, underground is a separate table. Uh oh. Two. Two is Goblin Dungeoneers, uh, and we have to advance the time. Goblin Dungeoneers. Oh no, goblins! They are all riled up and looking to fight. And they're in the book. So we were in 44. Okay, Goblin Dungeoneers. Uh, I always get lost where these guys are. Goblin Dungeoneers. They're level two, monstrous humanoids. Three gold, one food reward, nine health, nine, uh, nine health, and nine energy. Okay. Let's fight them. Okay. Uh, this is a normal fight, right? So, uh, we can. I mean, I could summon these guys for fun. I don't know if we do this now. Maybe we do it. Yeah. All right. So we're going to spend... Uh, we have to spend two energy to do Alpha Onslaught. 
Although we could actually, our energy is kind of low. I, I'm thinking I might want to save some energy. Just do like a regular attack actually for five. Um, but let's see how defensive these guys get. They could hit us for group health. Uh, so the problem is if they do a group health or group energy, uh, they will hit all of our guys. Uh, but our wolves are eight health. Our boar is 10. Hmm. But if I, if, if one of these die here, we lose them. Uh, I don't have them for future fights, right? I think, uh, or no, I lose them for the round. Starting next round, continuing until the end of combat, you choose which action each creature takes each round. If a creature is killed, you lose access to it until the end of the next game turn. Yeah, so I lose them for this fight. Uh, end of the next game turn. So yeah, I'll lose them for like a whole day, right? Oh man, okay. So maybe I don't want to risk that here because these guys are only nine health. They don't have, they have a defend four. They have a defend four they can do. So this might, maybe I do that. So, because group health, it would only be two damage. So yeah, let's, let's get nuts. Let's get nuts. It's just spending the energy. Yeah, maybe not. Hmm. But then I could eat him. He's level two, so I would get back four. I'd spend an energy to get back four. Hmm. Maybe I'll do. I uh, do it. Yeah. Sure. I'm gonna spend two energy. Oh, this feels bad. I should not do it. Get a hex. Okay, I'm going to spend two energy, we'll do Alpha Onslaught, which is going to deal Alpha Onslaught, which is three, plus Feral Blow, which is my attack, so we're doing eight damage. Yeah, this is like crazy. So eight, eight damage, and then summon a number of creatures from your pack whose total level is equal to or lower than Alpha Onslaught rank. So I can summon, since I'm at three, I can just summon like the great boar, or the giant boar, giant boar, sorry, giant boar, I'll summon the giant boar, and my giant boar, uh, I'll just put his, he's 10 and 12, okay, 10 health, 12 energy. I'm gonna choose him. Is he out already? Oh, I can't choose it yet, I'm just summoning him right now. See, this is kind of dumb because he's not even available to next round. Yep, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it. Going back. I'm not going to summon any. Uh, oh, no, I still have to spend energy to do this attack, though. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, because I like the damage. I like the damage. I'll summon him. Whatever. Whatever. I'll just summon him. It's fine. All right. So we got this giant boar in the combat. He's, he's there to fight. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Um, now, we got to roll for the enemy. Four. He's going to spend four energy. Whoops. Okay. And he's going to group energy and survival. So, let's just roll yellow for the boar, blue for me. Although, he doesn't have a survival stat. I forget how these guys work. Um, but I'll just roll my survival. This is a group attack, so he's hitting everybody, right? Those who fail are wounded. Or does he just roll against mine? Uh, we can check quick. We can check quick. Summon. Where are these summons? Or oh no, they're like uh, an ally, right? Allies, 38. Let's see quick how quick we can do this.
Mm, nope. Doesn't say it there. Probably in combat, right? Combat. Yeah, allies who don't have skills don't roll them. Okay, okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. They just take, they always fail, right? They always fail. I just didn't know if they roll against the host value. So we got a three. So that's a fail. <laughs> Stupid two. All right. Uh, so this guy, uh, we're both wounded. And wounded is. Uh, wounded persists. Even after combat ends, wounded heroes suffer a minus two penalty to all ability and skill ranks until they receive healing. It also stacks. Ability and skill ranks. So all, all of our ability and skill ranks are minus two going forward as we're wounded. I uh, might be using that potion here. That is crazy. And it defends four. So this thing's going down to five. Five health. And we're both wounded. Uh, what's the best place to put that? This right here. But again, it's on the back, so we won't really see it. Uh, I'm just going to write it here. For now. Just right there. Okay. Now they're throwing rocks. And we take uh, group energy. So we each lose three energy. So I'm down to zero energy, just like that. Wow. Filthy, filthy. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, a uh, new round of combat. Oh, man. So I can't even, I have no energy to even spend to defend and use the item together. But I guess I could just defend. And then my boar just attacks. And my boar, I can use him to do like piercing uh, three. So three of this four attack will get through for sure, even if he defends. I could have him spend three energy. He'll do a five health. Hmm. <laughs> I can't eat them yet. I have to defeat them first to eat them. <laughs> No, the potion, so what I'm talking about, Pontus, is uh, when you're playing true solo, uh, you because you're just by yourself with one hero, I could attack and also defend for half my defend rank, rounded down, and, and be able to use an item while defending. So, because I have, I have to spend an energy to do that little trick, but I have no energy left, so I just have to defend by, my, by itself, the old-fashioned way, and then st try to use the item, uh, the potion, which I would just use, to try to get energy back. But I think I'll just hold out, and maybe, because the problem is I'm wounded, right? So like, yeah, I could just heal after I eat them, so I can gamble, right? Um, and just attack, but my attack, because I'm wounded, is uh, minus two. So I'm only attacking for three, but that might be okay, because then the boar also attacks with me. So yeah, let's let's just do the boar is going to. We could I like the four with piercing three, so the boar is going to do, uh, one damage, and three that is unavoidable. It's piercing, and then I'm going to just attack for three. Okay. And just do my regular old boring attack. Okay. Let's see what this guy does. Uh, Ponda says, yeah, but can't you drink the pot for energy? Well, 
Like the drink in the potion will give me energy back, but to use the potion, I can't use it unless I'm defending. And defending during battle allows you to lose uh, to use one item on that turn. You can't just use items willy nilly unless they allow you. I'm pretty sure it's how it works. So I would have to take a turn defending to use that potion. And it is plus three health and plus three energy, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's, yeah, there's a restriction to, like, I can't just use all the items right now, you know? Because I'm in the middle of a fight. I can't just stop drinking a potion. I have to, like, put up my shield first to buy myself time to drink it. <laughs> that's how I look at it, but I could be wrong. Okay. Uh, so let's find out what the enemy does, right? A uh, hex, that's not good. So it does two damage, single target health, and all skills. If at least one fails, the target is bleeding. Okay, so the target, <clears throat> I'll do the boar yellow uh, and myself blue. Highest roll is the target. I'm the target. Okay, so it's going to hit me. So I lose two health. Okay. Um, and if at least I'm going to fail the skill because like I, 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 I can't roll like to I'm minus two on all my stats. So I'm not going to roll. So I have to roll. Yeah, I'll just fail. And now I'm bleeding. <laughs> this is horrible. Uh, bleeding. Uh, bleeding targets lose one health during the declaration phase each round, which is the start where I'm choosing my abilities to use. Bleeding continues till the target receives healing or until combat ends. Okay. Okay, so a bleeding shouldn't matter. Because uh, this guy didn't defend. So now when I apply three, four, five, six, seven, it, he's dead, right? And then our giant boar, he's still here, he's good. Uh, I'm going to choose to eat this guy, though. Oh, I can't spend one health and one energy to consume them. Ah, didn't think of that. I didn't think of that. Yeah, yeah, I need the energy to even use this ability. Oh, well. But I can use the potion outside of combat, which is fine. It's okay. So we get three gold and one food. Okay. Right, right, right. Okay, now we're going back to entry 44. I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I could... Once per game turn, after defeating an opponent, you may spend one health and energy. I feel like I probably should be able to do it, but maybe not. I don't know the timing on that. Cobalt Gamer, surprise I'm back. Hey, welcome back. Yeah, I'm not sure the timing on that. Uh, yeah. Maybe Jonathan will let us know. Like, I defeated him. Yeah, just do it. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we don't have to win. I'm okay if we, we make bad decisions. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we're doing a potion. 11 and 3. Potion's gone. Now see, that could be a mistake. Maybe that potion's more important. Rule of cool it? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Let's be cool here, alright? Let's be cool. Uh, okay, so we use the healing. We're not wounded anymore. Get the heck out of here. Uh, then we're going to spend one of each. So we're going to go down to 10 and 2 to then heal. Because we're going to eat this, eat these guys we just beat. And they were... What level were they again? Uh, they were level two. So we eat four. We go up four on each one. So we're at 14 and six. Beauty. Beauty. Yum, 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 yum. Okay. Uh, where were we? That was our circumstance. You're missing your home now, in the dark. A warm bath and some soothing ointment would really 
be welcome right about now. Pushing those thoughts of comfort aside, you make your way to a closed wooden door at the end of a thankfully trap-free branch of the mine. Read 69. <laughs> what is this? Uh, as you gather around the wooden door, you can hear a faint scuffle of feet on the other side and then silence. A little wooden sign nailed to the door looks like a recent addition based upon the age of the wood and the fact that the dye of the letters hasn't flaked off. It reads, Prisoners only. Thief stole keys. If found, bring to dented. <laughs> that what it says. You look around you, there is nothing but darkness past the dimming light of your torch. You don't feel like anything is going to come out from behind you, but you don't fully trust your senses down here. The door itself is locked and taut. Since it appears to be an original piece of the mines, the lock itself is so ancient and rusted that you're certain that picking the mechanism will be out of the question. You'll either need the key or think of some other way to enter. If you have the dwarven key ring, Read 52. Mm, nope. Didn't find that loot. <laughs> uh, if you call out to whoever is on the other side of the door, read 3. Or if you attempt to bash the door, read 23. Okay, we have another choice for you guys to make. We have another choice. You guys can choose what to do. Uh, call out to whoever is on the other side, if that fits. No. Nope. Where did that go? Or try and bash the door. All right, put the poll in the chat. You guys can decide. Hey, successful geek. I'm so excited for this. How are you liking it so far? I ordered it with the recent campaign. Uh, I played yesterday and so far playing today, I'm seeing a bunch of different entries than I saw yesterday. Uh, and I love this. You guys know I love this stuff uh, from other games we played on the channel. Like this, this reminds me a little bit of Tainted Grail, big giant book, making options and choices. Um, but I love how it's added to explore it. I like the rules changes they did to make the campaign work. I think make it more interesting too. I like the race for time mechanic, the pressure it puts on me. Uh, I also like the theory of raising the difficulty and having the chance to stop it from raising. I think that's neat. Uh, again, I haven't seen that in action yet, but I've only, only dabbled in the prelude, right? So I've only like scratched the surface, but I, I tell you, man, this, like, I love campaigns. So like, keep that in mind. Uh, I'm a little biased with the whole, I, I love Explorer and I love campaign games. So you guys know, like, but again, they're not for everybody, <clears throat> but man, $40 for a 500 plus page book. Like there was no textbook. This is like a textbook back in college. And I don't remember getting any of those for $40 even used. Uh, so like, I, I, I think it's a pretty good, I think it's pretty good. But yeah, I'm loving it so far. I think it's great, great value for sure. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you love Explorer, it's like no brainer, but not everybody wants to be like pulled out of Explorer, right? Because it does change the game up a little bit, you know, like, well, actually quite a bit. Um, and not everyone wants to sit there and read through storybooks and flip pages and all that kind of stuff. Some people just like the standalone scenario stuff, have some fun and then, you know, walk away. But I mean, you know what you're getting into, which is cool. All right. Uh, what'd you guys choose? <laughs> Kanji, you're correct. Kanji said you could sell those college textbooks back for like $15. Damn ripoff artists. I'm not bitter. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. So 61% say try and bash the door down. Oh man. Let's do it. Okay, I didn't expect that one. All right, well, yeah, I guess I should have. <laughs> uh, if you attempt to bash the door, read 23. Let's do it. We're just attempting. I don't know if we will. Uh, all right, there is no way that this 
uh, desiccated an ancient wooden door could withstand any sort of force. It's even rattling on its own hinges, on its hinges. Uh, despite being a big, blocky thing, a mighty kick just might do the trick. Each hero may attempt to break the door by rolling attack. Heroes who succeed suffer three energy drain. Heroes who fail suffer six energy, energy drain and may try again. Health damage suffered as a result of this action is non-lethal. So you could lose all of your energy for energy drain. Anything that goes beyond the energy you have left drains from your health, but it's non-lethal on the health part. So you'll never die from it. But that would suck. But it's cool thematically, like wearing yourself out trying to break the door down. Uh, when there is one success, continue reading. Oh, and striker type, which we are a striker type. Uh, you gain a minus one bonus to your roll and suffer no damage. Oh, if you criti critically succeed, increase your energy rank by one. We'd actually increase uh, this, I think, by one. Wow, okay. Uh, let's try to bash this door in. So we are testing uh, against attack. And we get a minus one to our roll. So we're trying to hit five or lower. And we get to take one off of our die. Uh, we rolled ten. Which, which minus one's a nine. Like holy rolls. Um, but we don't suffer damage. So we just try again. Yeah, I think we just try again. Like, I don't see... Yeah, so, I, like, I, I don't understand. If we suffer no damage, then why are we even rolling? Because we could just keep rolling. But I guess we have a chance of getting a critical, right? Uh, Skip, thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome, welcome. So we got, we got a success on the second one. Uh, not a critical success, so we don't get the extra. So the sound of splintering and cracking wood echoes throughout the dark tunnels. And with each strike, you manage to make some progress. You kick away some remaining debris from the door and are able to step inside. Gain straight forward. All right, we got our first, uh, our first campaign status. Straight forward. Straight forward. All right. Hopefully that helps us out some. All right, where were we? Then read 32. <laughs> well, I don't have the loaded dice pack for this game, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I didn't add that add-on to my uh, last pledge, I'm sorry. Uh, so we are going to... <laughs> I'm getting confused now. Okay, sorry, 32, 32. Uh, the light of your torch flickers against the dull sacks and barrels that line what appears to be an old storeroom. Three figures are huddled together in a corner. A woman is clutching two young boys to her chest protectively, but her demeanor relaxes when she sees that you are not the captors she was expecting. The woman explains that she and her family were traveling to Dragonsport when they came across this old mine. Her sons were playfully exploring when they were all captured by a group of goblins and taken into the tunnels. They tried to tell the goblins that they didn't know they were invading a home, but were only advised that a king click would determine their fate now. Uh-oh. King it says goblins don't have a king or anything even remotely close to it. They have numerous tribes scattered throughout the valley, all squabbling and fighting amongst each other. If those tribes stop fighting, though, dot, 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 there is no time to consider these ramifications. You need to lead these people to safety now. You tell the family to follow you, but there is little movement. The boys look worried to their uh, mother. And you soon realize why her right ankle remains shackled by an iron chain to the wall of the storeroom. While the boys have managed to escape their own bonds due to their smaller frames. Please, just take my boys back to their father, the woman pleads to you. He escaped before they threw us in here. He went to find help, and now you're here. You are the reason my children will live. Just tell Cabin, Cabin, that his morning son loves him. Aww. <laughs> okay, uh, each hero... Uh, gains either one gear upgrade or three food and two gold. Uh, I'm going with the gear upgrade. 
And you guys know where that's going. Right here. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, putting our defense up one would be pretty sick too, but... Yeah, we'll just go with that. That's where my gut tells me to put it, even though I'm, I don't think we need it really, but... Um, if you have straightforward, read 34. Your discussion on how to free the woman is cut short by the sound of a dozen pattering feet and vicious cackling. The shattered door must have alerted a nearby group of goblins. Your dim torchlight reveals the first of the goblins turning the corner of the tunnel, heading straight towards you. His snarling face is soon joined by a dozen others, and together they attack. So we advance one time. Are we literally still on day two? Like, this is crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> wow. This is so different from yesterday's playthrough. So different. Uh, it's very cool. Uh, you're ambushed by goblin dungeoneers. It says if you flee, read 67. Otherwise, continue reading after you vanquish them. So we're in 34. I'm just going to remind myself by writing this here. We're in entry 34, just in case I forget. Goblin dungeoneers. Oh, that's just who we, we just fought them. So we have more of them. Okay. I don't think we'll flee. But man. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Uh, so what do we want to do to these guys? I feel like we just summon again and do that again. Um, yeah, let's just do the same thing. Because uh, it worked last time. We'll spend two energy. Uh, we're going to summon the giant boar for next round. And he's a 10. 12. So you can't do anything this round. Uh, but our damage we're going to do is 8. Okay, let's roll for this dude. 1. Group health, piercing 1. Boost the piercing damage by 1 if they suffer damage this round. Oh, he's suffering damage this round, all right. So it's piercing two. And it was group. Uh, so this guy's an eight. Okay, eight health left on my giant boar. He got pierced. Mm -mm. And this guy's down to one health, right? Yeah, I think we just smashed him for eight. He didn't defend or anything. Yeah. Okay, uh, so next round, I'm just going to do a regular attack for five. My giant boar, uh, I'm just going to do the piercing one again, so that we for sure get him. Uh, plus one here, so three piercing, and f but it's four total damage, uh, but three of it goes through no matter what, I think. Okay, so let's roll for this dude. Five. Uh, so he spends four energy to do group energy and survival. Eight, so I definitely fail on that. Those who fail, I'm wounded again. Uh, and this guy defends four. But there's six coming at him. Yeah, he's dead no matter what. And we're going to lose three energy. Yep. And my boar would lose three energy too, but combat's over. We kill this guy. Uh, and I am wounded, but I'm going to eat him right now. I'm going to eat him right now. So I'll spend going down to two, 11. And then we know he's level two. So we're going to go up by four, 15, and six. Right. I think that was right. You do mark off the upgrade band. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, I missed that answer before, Frank. I'm sorry when I asked. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Guys are funny. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, seeing the Morlock bust in, kick down the door first, and save them, and then and then the goblins run down the hall. I, I summon a giant pig, and then uh, just start eating goblins in front of them. Yeah, that's not that's not traumatizing to the children at all. They're gonna come with me back to safety, no problem. I, I won't need to convince them. I'm sure they're not scared at all. Okay. <clears throat> um, and then we get three gold and one food. Okay. Going back to 34. Uh, we didn't flee, but we vanquished them. The last of the goblins fall, but the distant cries from deeper in the mine tell you that more are on their way soon. You need to either depart now with the woman's children or free her in some way. There is no time to waste. If we were goblin or goblinoid, we'd get a heroic moment here. Uh, brute or berserker? We're not that. Heroes with a food rating of three or higher. We're not that either. If you have the dwarven key ring, we, no, we, <laughs> that would obviously make it easier to get her out. Uh, or, and now we have options. Oh man, this is a good one. So if you leave the woman behind, read 9. If you take the time to break the chains, read 20. Crazy. Uh, leave the wife behind. Or... Try and free her. Right. So this is up to you, chat. You guys can vote in the in the chat uh, on the poll. You guys decide. Do we just take the kids and run, or do we take the time to try to break the chains uh, to get the wife to come with us? But time is of the essence. Like, I I don't know what's gonna happen if we try to break the chains. Maybe, maybe more bosses, like maybe a boss shows up, maybe like more, more goblins. Uh, for time in the deck, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cards. And we still, we know we still have to get back to the shrine, like, like across the map again. Uh, traveling each day, using up time for every couple hexes we move and stuff, right? She is a hex wife now, leave her. Oh my god. <laughs> They're horrible. Uh, Brian wants to know, did the husband indicate if at all he wanted a new wife? I don't think we got that information out of him. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, Bob says, option one, bite her foot off, eat it, and leave. Option two, chop her foot off, eat it, and leave. <laughs> Jackpot man says, leave the witch. She is a hex. Hex in Danish means witch. <laughs> uh, Kanji says, the answer to this will mean Rob is sleeping on the couch. Or no, no, this is the thing. I'm not making the choice. Kanji, it's the, it's the chat. So I, I, see, I, I see how I push the blame off. By letting you guys decide, so that I'm not in trouble. All right, I'm gonna close the poll. Thank you, everyone that voted. <laughs> uh, you guys are funny. Oh man. Try and free her. Sixty-three percent. Okay. You guys aren't as evil as I thought. Guilt by association. Yeah, true. <laughs> All right, uh, we're gonna try to break, uh, try and free her, try to break the chains, read 20. Uh, 20. You promised the wounded man that you would return with his family, all of them. You are not about to abandon the promise now. Using whatever items that you find in the storeroom, you begin to assault the chains, prying at the links and smashing the bolts against the rocky wall. The work is tiring, but effective. She is almost free. All you need to do is all you need is just a little bit more time. Unfortunately, time is not on your side. The crackling echoes in the tunnel. Uh, the, the crackling echoes, sorry, in the tunnel draw closer. And soon, a dozen 
uh, goblins swarm into the room ready to attack. So we have to advance the time and face goblin looters. What have you guys done to me here? Well, let me just... So goblin looters. Uh, no, okay. Yep. And if we flee, we read something different than if we vanquish them. Uh, so keep, keep that in mind. All right, goblin looters. Oh, that's the outlast guys we fought before. Okay. So outlast of, what is this? Outlast of five. Okay, we've got to remember end of the round minus one, right? Uh, minus one end of round rob. I don't know if that makes sense. E-O-R? I, I don't know. This is how my brain works. Okay. So, uh, we're going to do the health test. <laughs> health test. We're going to test against health because uh, we rock at that. And we'll have a critical uh, on a five or lower. Three. So, we're going to reduce two off of their stat. And now they roll. Uh, oh, yeah, you guys can't see that. Uh, they roll a three. Uh, a three says, those who fail, two piercing energy damage. Not a four. Okay, so they lose two in the resolution phase and one at the end of the round. Uh, so we're down to two outlasts. Man, we're crushing this. I, I, we're crushing this. I think we're okay. Maybe not. All right. So we'll do the health again. Ten. That's not... Not a pass. Serenity now. Oh, it is. No, it's not. It always critically fails, right? Yeah, 10 is always a critically fail. No matter what. All right. Uh, so what's the, what are they doing? Five. Those who fail suffer one health and one energy damage and become wounded again? Ah, so our stats are... Uh, or not, our, I don't think our, our vitals are lowered. Uh, wounded is minus two penalty to all ability and skill ranks. So our, our um, this is not reduced by two. It's just all these um, skills and abilities. So we lose 14 and three. And... If any hero suffers damage from this attack, increased outlast by one. So it'll just cancel out with the end of the round, so it'll stay at two. So now we only get critical success on three or lower. We're going to do the health again. Yeah, let's just do that. All right, we got a critical, so minus two. Oh, pew. Five again. Oh no. Oh yeah, so hold on. Uh, so they cancel out the end of the round because they go up by one. And we lose a health, 13 and two. Okay. We're wounded still. Does that stacks, right? Yeah, wounded stacks, so we're actually minus four on all these and minus four on all these <laughs> till we heal, which we'll heal when we eat them. Nom, 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 nom. But we only heal two, but that's okay. That's okay. All right. So their outlast goes up one and then end of the round minus one. So resolution phase minus two plus one, they're at one, then end of the round, they're minus one. So we got them. Got them. Okay, so then we'll we'll eat them. So our stat, we, we spend one health, one energy to eat them to get two back. So I'll just raise these by one each. 14 and three. And we're not wounded anymore because we got some healing. Okay, and we're going back here. All right, uh, we vanquished them. So we're going to read entry number five. 
You managed to withstand the brunt of the goblin onslaught as the last days that were crumples to the dust as the last day ugh, let's do that again. You've managed to withstand uh, the brunt of the goblin onslaught as the last of that wave crumples to the dusty ground. With one final swing of your weapon, you already weakened metal tethering the woman the, uh, sorry, you the already weakened metal tethering the woman to the wall shatters. I, I can't read right now. I'm, I'm losing it. With one final swing of your weapon, the already weakened metal tethering the woman to the wall shatters. The two children cling to their mother and her to them, wiping her grateful tears into their tussled hair. There is little time for rejoicing, however, as you can hear more goblins approaching from deeper within the mine. Oh, we gain true heroes. I don't think I've ever gained that in any game. <laughs> uh, true heroes. If you have avoidant, avoidant, read 13. No, we don't have that. Uh, otherwise, read 17. Okay. 17. You dash down the darkly lit mines, your torchlight bouncing about the passage as you run for the entrance. You sidestep the rem rem uh, remnants of the traps that you faced earlier, a clear indication that what you're attempting was either heroic, foolish, or both. You are no longer underground. With the voices of angered goblins fading behind you, you finally emerge from the mouth of the mind and continue fleeing into the nearby forest. You dare not look back yet, feel confident, that the goblins will not be following you so far away from their hideout. Each hero may draw two power-ups. Oh. Here's the choice. Here's the choice. So this is our first chance. So if we draw them, we draw them from here. But that only leaves six cards. And we're not allowed to look, I don't think, before we... Yeah, we can't look. We have to choose beforehand, I think. So if we draw two power-ups, we have six left. We know at the end of the day, we're at least advancing one. And then movement to get back home. We would only have five cards to play with. I think I'm going to say no. I think I'm going to say no. I don't want to risk not getting back. Because we might wander. We might bump into something. Like, who even knows, right? I don't want to risk it. I want, I want time. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ignore that. This is a cool decision point that's going to come up as you play the game in campaign mode. Normally, uh, my instincts, playing Explore It, tell me I want to draw off this deck as much as possible. It's my favorite thing, just having my stats get up and crazy. By seeing all these cool bonuses in this deck, you know, just increasing your stats. But this campaign, it's, 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 it's getting real out here. <laughs> you can't just get all the goodies. You have to make choices. When you do a boss fight, though, you do draw them from the restore deck so they don't affect your time. But, uh, yeah, so I, I think it's trying to teach us something here. So we're going we're gonna to say no. Place a hex token here. Uh, this location. Uh, whoa, I knocked my guy off. So we're going to place a hex token here. So we can't go back into the mines. It's closed off. It no longer triggers an event phase. If you have heavy burden, scar uh, scared children become an escort. If you have true heroes, the grateful family becomes an escort instead. So grateful family, uh, they have eight health, four defense. So we gotta like get them back. They're like little 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 escort characters here. So uh, I'll draw a little heart, eight health, and then a shield. Uh, that's a bad shield. Four defense. Okay. Let's remind me what they have. Uh, and it says, either way, they will require two food each sunrise phase. If this escort dies, advance one time and then return them to one health. So it's like they're, they're like, yeah, it's going to cost me food and I got to keep them alive. And they're going to like drag me down. Basically, the event is now complete. So now that we've completed that event, uh, we're going to, yeah, we're not on anything. So the villain phase. So we just advance one. 
Okay, sideways. And then we're in sunrise, so we're on day three. And then what does it say for triggers that they eat? If you have true heroes or heavy burden, the group must consume two food total each sunrise. Okay. Who said I wanted to feed these children? <laughs> if you cannot, read 39. Uh, no, I'll feed them. We're good. We're good. I'll feed them. Keep them quiet. All right. Uh, movement phase. So what are we doing here? Oh, look, I, I messed up the whole map. I can't even see it. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to get rid of this little stand. I want to be able to see the map. Okay, we're good. We're good. Let's fix this. Uh, couldn't see it. I was banging with my little sheets. Okay. All right. Uh, so, we can travel along the road and move cautiously. One, two, three. Those are all road spaces. The only problem is now we're in those southern steps, so we got to be careful. Uh, but we move cautiously, so we will roll the yellow and the blue. Oh yeah, we got to spend time. So it's still two, we advance two, one for every two hexes rounded up. So we're down to only five cards left in the time deck. <laughs> Fatten the kids up, yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, critical fail there, that's fine. Uh, explore. So we definitely have to eat food. I'm just thinking, I'm reading the trigger. Uh, sorry, we're down to five, right? Was it? Oops. So it's a navigate or explore critical, which definitely we did not get success. Nope. Uh, explore group success. Yeah, we failed that. So we don't do that either. Okay, so now with circumstance, let's roll against the circumstance table. Five. Is, oh, restore one. Okay. Restore one time. Uh, heal two health and two energy. Okay, I think that's what we got before, actually. Um, it says, yeah, you've discovered an easy path through the normally rough terrain. Your feet are grateful. Heal two health and two energy. So 15 and 5 we're going to. Okay. Um... And that's, that's it. Uh, another villain phase. Sunrise. We gotta feed them. Down to three. Uh, we mark off another day. On day four. Um, what else? Sunrise. Okay, movement. I say we just move normal. And try to get back. Like, we might wander, but... Even if we wander, next turn we could do it for sure because we'll just move cautiously and we won't wander, right? So yeah, let's just do movement of one, two, three. So that's two cards from our time deck, which leaves us with three remaining. Okay, let's roll. Hopefully, maybe we don't even wander, but with a three uh, navigate, I mean, like, we love to wander. Uh, yep. Wandering, critically fail on survival, and we find nothing but dirt. No gold. So, uh, we have to eat for sure. Down to one food. Juan, how's it going? Oh, true. Keith's recommending uh, we could just eat one child. Uh, we could eat a child if we run out of food. Uh, that should take our food consumption in the sunrise phase. Down by half, I would think. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, we're not going to do that. That would be wrong. All right. 
Uh, find dirt, and now we wander. So a wander is here. Three, we're going to the south. So we did wander. Uh, circumstance. Yeah, like we never pass these things critically or anything. A one, what's a one? Inclement weather. Oh, so time goes up by one, we advance. Inclement weather, uh, if that's how you say it, yeah. Inclement weather. A storm has moved into the region. You are now forced to move more slowly, which I think we're still okay. This card supersedes other ongoing nature circumstances. Your movement is slowed by one hex. Oh. Oh, to a minimum of one. Okay, to a minimum of one. We're still good, right? We still, still can move cautiously. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Move only one hex is cautious, and it can't reduce us to zero, so... Oh, so this is actually not bad. And the group suffers a plus one penalty to all skill roll results. This effect remains for four game turns, but... There is a note in here that says it only lasts two villain phases. If already in play, extend by two more villain phases. Do not advance additional cards. Okay. So it only lasts for two. So I'm just going to put it here, and I'm just going to put a two counter on it. So every time I go to a villain phase, we'll re reduce that by one. <laughs> Drew... Quit asking so many questions, or I'll have to remove you from the chat. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. My daughter is safe and sound. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, inclement weather. And then we go to villain phase, which this reduces by one. Uh, we throw one of these here. We're on to day five, I think, if I've counted that right. One, two, three. yeah. Okay, we're on day five. Sunrise. Oh, this is a problem. So how does this work again? The group must consume two food total each sunrise. If you cannot, read 39. Aw, oh, man. So I can't, so I'm just gonna leave it at one. Let's see what happens. Uh, please, 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 please don't, don't be bad. Please don't one of the children die. We're like right there, man. Damn wandering. Uh, all right. As day breaks, the camp is broken down. One of you comes to a sad realization while preparing the rations for the day, there's not enough food to sustain both you and those you have rescued from the mines. You clearly cannot make them go without food after their treatment at the hands of the goblins, but you also need to keep your own strength up to ensure the safe return to the shrine. The rations that you do have are cut thin and divided out to everyone. It may be enough to support you all throughout the day, but you will not be able to push yourselves as far. Advance to... <gasps> It advanced two and I only had one card. So we lose, right? <laughs> no way! No way! Oh, man. Damn it. All right, let's see here. The chapter ends with the heroes unsuccessful if any of the following conditions are met. If all heroes are killed, no. If the group must, must advance but is unable to do so, read 68. Okay, let's read 68. Maybe it's gentle and we didn't lose yet, but I think we did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Could have moved recklessly the turn before. Yeah, but the only problem is that would have ate more time also, right? It's okay. It's okay. This is what happens. This, this leaves other options for you to try on your own playthrough. Uh, I'll show you something in a sec. Just, just bear with me here. Bear with me. Here's, the, here's what we're reading. Uh, it has been days since you left the safety and sanctity of the Shrine of Seasons. 
This may have been the longest time yet in your lives that you have been outside the protection of those gates and high up in the mountain. The quest to save the wounded man's family was a noble one, but the longer you're away from your home, the stronger the worry in your mind becomes. Something about the situation was not right. You felt it since you first stepped past those gates down the mountain. You feel the overwhelming urge to return now. Unfortunately, your instincts return to the safety of your home. Uh, sorry. Unfortunately, your instincts to return to the safety of your home have been dulled for too long. You did not recognize the dangers of the land until you were too late. You now find yourselves at the center of a ring approaching the goblins. A ring of approaching goblins, sorry. Their blades out and yellow teeth barred in wicked smiles. There must be a hundred of them ahead. Your last thoughts are of home and the hopes that the goblins will not be able to find their way up the mountain. You'd better get running now. They're close. The end. The end. <laughs> Check out the time in the reckless section. Oh, is it different? I just assumed it was it was worse. But it should be, right? Yeah, if I move recklessly. Uh, advance one. Oh, for every three hexes moved, round up. Ah, it's different. So we could have been uh, moved recklessly. But then we would have suffered two energy drain. And we auto fail on the other two. That's fine. That's okay. That's okay. That's cool. I didn't see that ending yesterday. That's good. I'm down. It's all good. I don't mind. We ran out of food. We ran out of food. Again. Which is why I value survival stat. I value survival stat. And our uh, food rating. Our food rating. Um, you know. On the cards. Very highly. This is... A survival game and the campaign still follows that feel. So I just want to show you guys. Okay. Uh, so we just saw that one ending. Okay, that's cool. I'm not going to spoil any other endings or anything. But I just want to show you, you guys saw which chapter passages we went through and all and like the couple heroic moments we had a chance of doing. But this is just the prequel passages here. Like we we only scratched the surface in the prequel. There are so many passages we didn't even read, so many heroic moments we didn't get, so many other choices we could have we could have chose, obviously, so many other places we could have visited. We didn't even visit the other ruins, um, and and we didn't have those triggered events happen uh, by critically succeeding in in those certain areas of the map. Um, but yeah, lots of stuff in here, and this just the prequel. This is just like learning the game and just trying it out. So like even there's replayability there in the prequel, which is crazy. And this is like so normal time not playing slow on stream like I do This is like an hour and a half of game time every time you play the prequel You don't need to play it. It's optional. It's not really connected to the story. It's just you know, obviously a prequel uh, But the campaigns for comparison are two to six hours So if you play slow like me, that's like four to twelve hours <laughs> you know, so which is awesome because again, we like to leave the game on the table when we play it for long sessions You know I'll play it in a couple sessions three or four sessions, whatever um, but yeah uh, again chapter one uh, Much bigger map More story triggers map locations look at all the map locations You know look at all the circumstance cards look at all the triggered events in chapter one just a tease Look at all the different circumstance tables that are different based on which uh, kind of tile you're on uh, or which uh, hex you're on and all the different chapter items and statuses. And then, uh, let's see if we can. And there's four chapters. And I, I don't even want to know what they do. Like, I'm sure they're amazing, but I'm going to wait till later in the year when, when uh, everyone kind of has it and we'll play through it live on the channel. So uh, it'll be some fun. We'll do the play along thing. You know, I'll have Mel here. We'll play two player, uh, but this is chapter one. Like, look at how much stuff is just in chapter one. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, so yeah, it's really cool. Again, uh, one thing we didn't see that I want to kind of show. I wasn't sure we we're going to see it, but there's an optional section at the back for non-playable characters that you can bump into. And if you bump into them, you come and talk to them here, and you can choose to do different side quests with them based on which chapter or prequel that you met them in. And then there's a whole whole bunch of entries based on meeting NPCs and doing side quests. Like, it's crazy. And, and last, you know, when I played yesterday, I met this guy. 
I met this guy, but I didn't do a side quest. I, I was a little worried for time, so... Uh, but it is cool. It's like optional NPC stuff. And there's a whole bunch of NPCs you could run into on your playthrough, or maybe not. And maybe you do their side quests, maybe you don't. Um, but that's pretty cool. It's just an additional thing I could, we didn't see today. I wasn't sure we are going to see it, so I didn't want to talk about it before, really. Because um, I thought we would see it, and it'd be best to show it off. Um, but it explains here how they work. You can escort them. They have side quests, how to interact with them. Um, so that's just an additional thing that I didn't explain at the start. But you'll recognize some of those. Uh, yeah, Bezel Quark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bezel Quark, the, guy, the shop owner guy from the main game. Uh, so yeah. There's the Hexplorit 500 and whatever, 10, 520 page, whatever it is, uh, campaign book. And that's just the prequel. That's how it works. That's how it's different. Hopefully that was enough. Four hours worth of explanation and playing uh, that should give you a clear indication whether this product is something you're interested in or not for your Valley of the Dead King, Explore It Volume 1. And I want to re-emphasize... You can't play with just that book. You need this game, Explore It, Volume 1, Valley of the Dead King, okay? Which, uh, I mean, Jonathan can clarify, who's in the chat, uh, you know, uh, from Mariucci J Designs, uh, the publisher, he, he can confirm. But right now, you might be able to buy the game off of a web store or at your local game store. I know, I know this is sold at some game stores. Um, but they also have uh, the Volume 4. Uh, so if you're looking for this, there's links in the video description. Um, but go over on GameFound. There's a link down below. If you go to GameFound uh, and you back Volume 4, I, I think you can just pledge for the first volume if you want. But Jonathan, yep, it's available on GameFound. Okay. So on GameFound... Uh, if you don't have Volume 1 Valley of the Dead King, it's right here as an add-on. 64 US dollars. You, can, you need this minimum. So to play what I'm playing today, I, I had extra stuff because I have the expansion also. I have this living card deck. We didn't see anything from that though. Um, but there is stuff in the game from that. But there is a bundle. So you, you got a taste of it. If you want to look more into what Valley of the Dead King is, I have other videos down below where you can go read about it online. You can find videos. You can find uh, information on the Hexplorer website that's linked down below. Um, but it uses all this stuff. So if you do have more Volume 1 stuff, you can use it. Uh, but this is the book I was playing with. Okay. So to add campaign mode to Hexplorer Volume 1, that's what this product is. Hopefully it's straightforward. I feel like it's a little confusing to some people who just come to the Hexplorer world at this point. And there's four different games to choose from. They all have expansions. They all have little add-ons and things are compatible with others and some things aren't. And there's tons of variants, tons of modules. Um, but the campaign book, my understanding, this campaign book is for the first volume. And uh, for those that stuck around, Ready? Ready? On the last page, okay, spoilery stuff. You don't want to know about what's in the future. I kind of talked a little bit about it. But they're obviously going to make Campaign 2 coming soon for the second volume. The Forest of Adramon, right? Uh, which is right here. So Volume 2, Forest of Adramon. Volume 3, Sands of Shirax. Volume 4, which you saw us play, that's, the, that's what's on Game Found right now, Domain of Mirza Noctis. And it looks like Volume 5 is the Mountain of Godai. Uh, so yeah. Look at that art, man. Look at that art. That's good stuff. So yeah, I, I definitely like, I, I'm, I'm hyped for this. I really like Volume 2. It's really cool. Uh, I, I think that would be awesome. I, like, I can only imagine... Like, Jonathan, we have to wait another three years for this one. <laughs> you guys better already be working on it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, just another way to add value. So, if you already have Explore Volume 1, another reason to pull it off the shelf, another reason to use your components and play with it to, to add some value to your game. 
Uh, it's basically like buying a campaign expansion, which we've seen for other board games before. So think of it like that. This is your campaign expansion, but instead of a box of some little cards and some boons and burdens, uh, you know, you guys see me talk about campaign games on the channel and when they just kind of add a little bit of fluff to connect a few missions together. But this game, like they rework the game basically to make it into a campaign. There's some serious work here. It's not just adding a couple cards or adding a couple tokens. They went, they went crazy uh, and, and changed like a new maps, tons of triggered events, tons of campaign statuses, all, all new items to purchase. Uh, there's specific campaign items. We didn't see any of these, uh, but in the prequel, you can find Chalia's hand axe, dwarven key ring, stolen dagger, traveler's charm. Things can get captured from you. Uh, they give you buffs. So look at all these new like item things you can get uh, for the different chapters, which is cool. Crazy, crazy stuff. I only scratched the surface today, but, uh, and again, there's uh, little reference cards for each chapter. So chapter one, just a little reminder, you can have this beside you so you can see the triggered events. So you don't have to keep flipping the pages like I was doing as much. Um, so they have a bunch of printout stuff for that. Links are, links are down below if you want to check out that stuff too. Uh, and then again, the optional way to play with this character sheet, which can track all of your stuff here. And I just laminated this stuff. It doesn't, obviously it doesn't come like this. You have to print it out. Uh, but I just printed it at my local printer shop and then I, I laminated it. Um, but yeah, I, but you can just play like, you know, clipboard style and just write on it with pencil or whatever. Uh, so that's an option. But yeah, I think I covered it all. Let's see what you guys have to say. Any questions or anything before I get out of here and go eat and try to set up for a 6.30 p.m. Lord of the Rings living card game stream? <laughs> John says, yeah, hoping for two years or less. Wow. That's crazy. I, like, I can't even imagine the amount of work to do, like, even the prelude like makes my head hurt thinking about like linking and designing all that stuff. I'm always so fascinated by these like, uh, I guess a kind of choose your own adventure kind of style narrative books where you're like making decisions and different things are happening. Yeah, so uh, no, yeah, you don't get those. Uh, they're in the book, you can photocopy uh, or here. I just laminated those myself and, and printed them myself. They're available here on the Hexplorit webpage, link down below. Hit up the download section. There's a lot of cool stuff here. If you guys have been playing the game, like I always come to this website and I'm like, whoa, there's, there's all this new stuff here. Like I, always, I don't realize it's here. So there's like a game aid for the keywords, conditions, if you just play the regular games. Uh, but right here, clicks madness campaign handouts. Okay. So here's what you get, two-sided hero sheet, campaign world map, purchasable items, campaign items, campaign statuses. So these are nice little reference sheets so you don't have to keep flipping in the book to all the different pages so often. And there's even like a little reference down here. But this all right here, you just, you just download this PDF and then you're good to go. Mm, cookies. Uh-oh. Oh, it's just loading. <laughs> I'm like, what is that? <laughs> it's like loading. Okay, yeah, so they're just like a PDF. You download them, you print them. Uh, and yeah, there's the world map. So this like shows you how all four chapters connect. Like the prelude map does not connect to the chapter maps. And there's all the different like hamlets and shrines and cities and they all have their own things you can purchase. Cities, hamlets, bezel quark, shrines. Campaign items. So you guys can look at this stuff right now. It's available on the website. Links down below if you want. To, if you're curious to look at it. Um, so yeah, that's all there. Yeah. Congratulations, Jonathan, James, and Frank. Uh, you guys did an amazing job. I hope it's successful. I, I mean, I think it's a, a beautiful product. Again, full disclosure, it was sent to me, but either way, like 39 US uh, for this quality of a book and from the writing and things I read so far, uh, yeah, I've only scratched the surface, but I, I really like what you guys did here. 
Um, but again, I'm a little biased because I love his Explore It and I love campaign games. So keep that in mind. So when I'm all excited about something, if you're not really into campaign games or like adventure games or dry erase boards, uh, then maybe this game's not for you. But if you like those things, uh, it's, it's a definitely a cool addition. Uh, great job, guys. Great job. Jonathan says, yep, the campaign is epic in its scope, very rewarding at the end because of the buildup that occurs. Oh, I can only imagine. Yeah, stay tuned to the channel. If you guys want to see a full playthrough of this thing later in the year, uh, we'll play it two-player. Hit the subscribe button, uh, as we'll definitely come back to this later. And vo oh, Jonathan says, Volume 5 for Hexplorer will be updating the community soon, likely via our newsletter and Volume 4 updates. Oh, that's cool. No rush. We gotta play volume uh, uh, four first before. <laughs> but yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and also, yeah, we'll also be playing uh, Domain of Mirrors and Noctis, volume four, when that arrives uh, later on the channel. So more Explore It coming for sure. And yeah, yeah. Anyways, thank you all for watching. I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you all for hanging out. Thanks for helping me play along through this. Super fun. Um, if you have any questions, go direct them over. Go over to the Game Found page, link down below, uh, and you should find all the information there. And you can ask questions, that kind of stuff. Uh, but anyways, thank you all for watching. Thanks again, Jonathan, for sending the book over. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next stream. Bye bye.